Black Alpha Network. Home of Black Excellence. Power to the people. Vladimir Putin says Africa is a cemetery for Africans. When an African, all oh, y'all listen to this shit. When an African becomes rich, his bank accounts are in Switzerland. He travels to France for medical treatment. He invests in Germany. He buys from Dubai. He consumes Chinese. He prays in Rome or Mecca. His children study in Europe. He travels to Canada, USA, and Europe for tourism. If he dies, he will be buried, buried in his native country. Africa is just a cemetery for Africans. How could a cemetery be developed? <laughs> This is for my certified foundational black American family tree down south, up north, east coast, west coast, all the way around. We don't run, we don't flee, we build it right here. Let's go. Yeah, new black media appreciation month continues. The roast continues. The certified hunted, we continue to put it down. Damn real, damn right, as we should. What's up, what's up, what's happening, family? It feel good today. It feels so motherfucking good to be a certified foundational black American. I mean, family, when all you do is win, when all you do is shine, when you're on game and you're on point to the fact where everybody in the world watches you, everybody in the world hate on you, think about you, you living in their mind rent-free, 24-7, 365, that make you walk with a step. So we gonna do some stepping on motherfuckers today. Some big stepping. We ain't walking around them. Nope. We ain't skipping over them. Nope. We stepping right on top of motherfuckers today. No problem on our way to that bag. Reparations over everything. So if that feel good to you, if that sound good, if that's G-double-O-D, then smash that like button and make sure you subscribe to the Black Alpha Network Certified Salute because today we gonna break it down and we gonna chop it up. We working. Oh, and let me say this real quick, family. You know it's Certified Foundational Black America, and you know it's New Black Media Appreciation Month because the ancestors are putting in overtime. So with that said, I want to send a shout out to Don Lemon, a special shout out to Don Lemon. Have fun in that Butter Biscuit unemployment line and that Coon unemployment line because I know CNN, the Coon News Network, done fired your ass. So all that anti-blackness, that tap dancing that you was doing, I hope it paid. I know that phone rang. I know they told you to come on down to Zaddy's principal's office. I know you got that pink slip and I hope you enjoyed it. Fam, don't I always say that the black grassroots in this generation is running coons out of business? Straight out the paint, straight out of Dodge and straight out of sight. Well, we gonna go ahead and add Don Lemon to that list because trust and believe, if Coonan was winning, Don Lemon would be employed. Now that Don Lemon is unemployed, that means that the black grassroots strikes again. Fox News, CNN, they firing everybody. That's why Marcus LeMoist Hill and Michael Erica Dyson are throwing them temper tantrums. That's why Roland Martin is sweating chicken grease on every episode. They all scared because when we get on code, they asses get kicked out. And right now, they got their shit thrown all out in the yard. <laughs> Thanks to us. Fox News, they done let a bunch of motherfuckers go. Trust me, when you start seeing news anchors get fired and you start seeing politicians disappearing, that means foundational black Americans are on code and they not getting the refunds that they wanted. They not getting the payback that they thought. Shit ain't going as planned because we the ones fucking it all up and we gonna continue to keep throwing that wrench in the game. And if you witness it, the whole mainstream media is crashing down and who are the last ones left standing? That's right, the new black media and new black media appreciation month. So certified salute to the family. When I say we building, when I say we working, shining and grinding, that means we putting in that certified work. And when you talk about working, you got to start with FBA because we are the ones who build, who work, who shine and grind. That ain't up for debate. No compromise. See, everything we say today, family, it's going to be with no debate. We're not sitting here going no back and forth with anybody. Tick for tack, you could throw that shit out the window. We saying what the fuck we say. We speaking what the fuck we feel. We putting it all on the table. All the cards, all the chips, all the pieces. So motherfuckers know what it really is hitting for. And what we hitting for is exceptionalism. And we've been exceptional since day one. The only difference is, is this generation and this era and this time. And that goes for all of us. 
We saying it loud and proud with our motherfucking chest, head to the sky. And ain't a damn thing anybody can do about it. See, when you talk and you're not for sure what you're saying and you lack confidence, people will see that and they'll expose that and they'll exploit that. And that's what happened back in the day with the Africans, Americans. They used to talk all wiggly and wobbly, no confidence, crying, tap dancing, singing songs, running around, trying to be integrated, trying to be helped, trying to be assisted. Everything that has something to do with being docile, that's how they used to be. And then this era came to the front door and we said, fuck all of that. We not making amends. We not making friends. We not being buddy, buddy. We want our money. And that right there was the game changer that sparked the world. This is what you see. The whole movement that we have going on right now. Family is everywhere. Don't let nobody tell you that we're behind the eight ball. Don't let nobody tell you that we struggling. Don't let nobody tell you we're underachieving or what we need to do. That we need to do, that shit is over with. That's gone. That's outdated. That was some old Negroes from the past that what we need to do, y'all, is go here, go there, and come back around. Man, fuck all of that. This is the look at me now generation. Watch what the fuck we doing. Anything that we say, we make it happen. We speak truth to power and we turn power into more power. Real time, real results. Make up your mind and go. That's why we're pushing. That's why everything that we're doing right now, motherfuckers have to acknowledge us. Everything that we say, motherfuckers have to acknowledge it. Everything that we think of, motherfuckers have to acknowledge it. There's no more trying to act like we ain't in the building. You feel me? That little shit where they always try to make it look like we're some type of lost people who don't really know who we are. We have no culture. We can't figure things out. And they just ignore us. You can't do that. But not neglect is over with. You can't benign neglect the most powerful lineage on the planet. And that powerful lineage on the planet has a generation, and I'm talking about all of us, who done planted a motherfucking flag in the ground and said, do something. Make a move. Respect it and check it. I wish a motherfucker would. Anything that has something to do with our lineage being prideful, that's what we're on. We put the whole goddamn world on notice, and we told them, we going for reparations. Like it or not, do something about it. And I wouldn't do that if I was you. That's the type of energy we on. And all my certified sisters, all my certified brothers, and the whole FBA family tree is pushing that goddamn line. Damn, I motivate my motherfucking self. Turned up. We cooking today. Hey, smash that like button if you're just rolling in early. Certified salute from the Black Alpha Network. This episode is pure fire. And we're going to continue to push this all the way through. And like I said, it's going to end the same way that it started. With exceptionalism and with G-checking motherfuckers right along the way. So we going right along the way in terms of getting our money money getting our tangibles and by doing that we've called out every single group every single person i don't give a fuck what you're affiliated or associated with you can say you not a group you can say you really are friends you can say you's an ally we ain't falling for none of that shit family what are we falling for in this generation what the fuck have we gone for the black grass roots is stronger than enough that's why i always say untouchable unbreakable unmatched and stronger than ever we are stronger than ever if you want to see what strength look like go find you the nearest foundational black american on code look at them in their eyes and you will see strength the personification of strength that's what it is i'm telling you family there is not another era that can ever compare to us we are doing groundbreaking record-breaking shit right now nobody's moved this quickly in this short amount of time with this many brothers and sisters on code who ain't taking no shit none at all and we don't give a fuck where you from we don't give a fuck what you say we don't give a fuck what you think you doing the only thing that matters is our lineage our heritage and our culture that is it. Outside of this foundational black American winner circle, outside of this foundational black American boss's table, we ain't got no energy for you because all you got is wasted energy. And you see what we doing with our certified energy. With our certified energy, we got folks flying all the way over from Africa, flying all the way from Jamaica, flying all the way from Haiti, flying all the way from Barbados or Belize. They coming from the UK's, from Canada's, uh, and they trying to get in on our reparations. We going motherfucking there. I said it was G-Check time. I said it. It's not like we just G-Checking out of nowhere for no motherfucking reason. We said it was G-Check time. So it's only right that we give the people some motherfucking G-Checking. And since I'm a man of the people, let's give the people what it do. They had a reparations conference, or oh, I'm sorry, a bullshit reparations conference with every single tether, twister, blender, fleer, non-FBA motherfucker they could find off the street. I mean, they was tether tap dancing, flea flicking, coon moon walking up and down the fucking street. But the motherfucking thing is, they had this conference in the country where me and your ancestors built. 
They had this conference in the country where me and your ancestors created. They had this conference in the country where me and your ancestors put their blood, sweat, tears, and life on the line to make it possible for them to come over here and benefit off of that slave labor. And family, you want to hear the most fucked up thing out of all of that? They did not mention our ancestors one time and they did not mention us, the offspring of those ancestral slaves. Not motherfucking once. So you know what that means, family? That means that they've made themselves available for some motherfucking G-checking. That means that they done put themselves on that regulated list. That means it's time to run some motherfuckers off the block. And we about to run their ass off the block. Ain't even gonna let them get their fucked up shoes tied. Hell to the no. Full speed. So fuck this Tether Reparations Conference. Fuck everybody who is at this Tether Reparations Conference. And fuck anybody who has a problem with certified foundational black Americans saying what I just said. Fuck them all. You know, one thing we've been doing is putting an end to a lot of these fake one-sided exploitation relationships that the older generations used to be a part of. You know these groups that never existed and the only folks that were actually a part of them were either Democrat shields, Republican shields, NCOBRA, the NAACP, all of those motherfuckers. They was out here playing patty cake by themselves. They was out here playing jump rope by themselves. They was out here playing hopscotch by themselves and wasn't nobody really even a part of it. You know how the black and brown coalition does not exist in Mexico? The same way that Pan-Africanism doesn't exist in Africa? How you got a black and brown coalition that does not exist in Mexico and Pan-Africanism that does not exist in Africa? The motherfucker got African in the name and don't exist because that's about as far as it ever existed. Words. Because in reality, what it really is, is not Pan-Africanism. Oh no, we're giving it a whole makeover today, family. Somebody hashtag this one for me. It's no longer Pan-Africans. Now it's Pan-Africoons. That's what the fuck it's really about. That's what the fuck we really calling out. And that's exactly what the fuck we throwing out. Yup, yup, yup. Pan-Africoons. Pan-Africanism never motherfucking existed. Somebody said Pan-Africanism was done. I said that shit was never here. In order to be done, that means your ass existed. These motherfuckers never existed, but I'll tell you what does. Pan-Africans. I see every time I turn on TikTok, I see a bunch of TikTok tethers, and they talking some Pan-Africanism. I know when I see Dr. Kubar Vasquez, when he's saying, I don't support reparations for FBA, I see some pan african all in his motherfucking eyeballs. I see at this meeting, this conference, these backdoor Zoom channel fucking get-together gatherings uh, where all they do is sit there and they put their tether fingers in our pot and they plot and strategize on how they can steal our reparations money and they disrespect our ancestors. I see pan african and that's what it is going forward. Gone is the Pan-African and is the scam African. And all they do is try to scheme ways where they can take away from foundational black Americans. But what's got them pissed off is the same thing that's got the black and browns no relation pissed off. Is that this generation ain't playing none of that shit. Our money's staying in-house. Our money's staying in our community and our money's going in our bank accounts. So what we've been seeing for the last five years is a bunch of people trying to come up with a billion different ways where they can take, take, take. But when we tell these motherfuckers hell to the gnaw, we watch them break down and we the ones stepping on them just like I said we was going to do. To the black world, 21st century led by President Dr. Ron Daniels plans the state of the black world conference, which is scheduled for April 29th to April 23rd in Baltimore, organized around the theme, Global Africans Rise in Empowerment, Reparations, and Healing. A major goal of the five-day conference is to strengthen the surge in U.S. and global reparations movement. Equally important, they say, the conference will explore strategies and models to effectively address issues of vital concern to Black America and the Pan-African world. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to The Bub Report. This is a special live stream of The Bub Report. We are coming to you from Baltimore, Maryland, where this evening uh, the uh, International uh, Black World Conference will be, and uh, we will be bringing this special event to you as a town hall, um, but this is certainly a, a very special event. Family, you hear that oppy-ass, scam, african ass shit? 
You hear that right there? That right there is what we talk about. Does that sound like pan, meaning all? Or does that sound like scam, meaning still? Nobody was talking about reparations until certified foundational black Americans did. These are the same people who tried to come and sit in on our panels. These are the same folks who were promoting flat blackness. These were the same folks who say, can't we get reparations too? I'm black, brother. These are the same folks saying, you don't have a culture. Same folks saying, akata. These are the same folks saying, go home, FBA. Y'all know they say FBA when they F got three E's on it and when they A got four H's, all right? FBA, that type of shit. That's them motherfuckers. Now, all of a sudden, they interested in reparations. Now, all of a sudden, they interested in the state of the black world. Family, when the fuck has Africa ever been interested in the state of the black world? If they were interested in the state of the black world, they would have never sold black slaves. Oh, we going there to motherfucking day. The same continent that has never lifted a finger to help anybody in the diaspora, all of a sudden, is interested in a black state of the world conference where we can talk about reparations they was never interested in helping black folks during slavery how many state of the black world conferences did they have during slavery how many state of the black world conferences did they have during reconstruction how many state of the black world conferences did they have during the civil rights era what about during the rodney king verdict what about trayvon martin what about mike brown brianna taylor sandra bland rakia boyd did they put out a statement did they ever come out and say, we want to have a state of the black world conference and talk about how bad black folks in America are treated? Every single time they want to have some type of gathering with us, it's all about what they can take from us. The year of the return with Ghana. You come to find out that was a cash grab going back to scam African. Don't get mad when we say scam African when motherfuckers just trying to scam foundational black Americans. Don't get mad that we don't fall for your bullshit. We understand that when you start talking about us, you seeing what we got. Watch the flip-flop family. When our pockets get big, it ain't stay away, Akata. Then it turns into come home, brother. When we get money in our bank account, come home, brother. When we start getting tangibles, come home, brother. Resources, come home, brother. Benefits, come home, brother. Businesses, come home, brother. They asses will flip from stay away Akata to come home brother, all depending on what they can steal from foundational black Americans. We build, they steal. We go in there today. And the fact is, is come home brother hasn't been working. They thought they was going to come home brother, year to return, come over here and buy this and get this in Africa. And black folks in America were saying, man, we ain't doing that shit. We was like, fuck no. Nah. We lineage base. Once again, this is the lineage base, foundational black American flag waving in the foundational black American wind era. And they can't stand that because they cannot exploit that. So they thought they was going to hit us with the come home, brother. They thought they was going to get us all to hop on one big ass jumbo jet and fly over there and leave America. That's what they thought. See, they could do that shit with the old generation that used to try to put on dashikis and live in Wakanda. We ain't concerned with none of that shit. We want to sit right here in the same country that our ancestors built. We want to sit right here in the same country that our ancestors created. We want to sit here right here in the country that belongs to us. We're not concerned with going no fucking where. So they said, well, if come home brother doesn't work, then we got to go to them. So that's why you see them coming over here with the state of the black world conference. They thought they'd be able to have us over there. We rejected that shit. So now they said, let's go over to their homeland so we can take from them. Same game, same hustle, same scam, Africa. And who they click up with when they got over here? Who are the first people that they were trying to make friends with and alliances with so they can get this bullshit ass conference off the ground? Yes, they went to the Democratic Shields. I'm going to connect some dots, family, right here on the Black Alpha Network. Appreciate the love and love you with a passion, family. Certified block party continues. If you look what we've been breaking down right here on the Black Alpha Network week after week, we're always talking about how the Democratic Party has an erasure where they're trying to erase our culture and they're trying to replace us with immigrants. That's what they've been trying to do. And we broke that down thoroughly right here on the Black Alpha Network. And the whole new black media has been very, very aware of that. So if you want to connect the dots to this conference in the Democratic Shields, look who's all there. NARC. In Cobra, NAACP, these on the book card carrying Democratic Shields all the way. So what you have now is all these scam Africans working with the Democratic Shields. Oh yeah, they're all clicked up. They all kiki and ha ha and holding motherfucking hands. The Democratic Shield and the scam African, they're both ops. 
And since they're both ops of foundational black Americans, and now they're working together, that makes them op partners. The Shield and the Scam African are op partners. They both have a little deal so they can serve Massa. The Shield has to serve Massa in the Democratic Party by helping the erasure of us. That's why you have all these All Lives Matter Democratic Shields. Anything where they can take our culture and put it below someone else's. That's the Democratic Shield. The Scam African, he just follows around and tries to get any little crumbs and any little dollars he can take from us. That's why Joe Biden went over there to Africa and he started talking about slavery is our original sin and he was letting the African cosplay us so he can slide our reparations money to them. And they sat over there and said, thank you, brother. They cosplayed FBA very willingly. They didn't sit there and say, no, what about my FBA brothers? They didn't say, no, what about the state of the black world? There was no motherfucking unity when Joe Biden was talking to them Africans about our reparations money and about the slavery that our ancestors dealt with. They acted like they were our FBA ancestors who were enslaved. In reality, they were the African slave traders who sold us into slavery. And they had no problems cosplaying foundational black Americans. Not at all. They were sitting there shaking Joe Biden's hand saying, yes, Amasa, it's so wrong what happened to us in Alabama. Oh, it was so rough for me when I went to the plantations of Mississippi. Never been to Mississippi, never left Africa, but I'll pretend that I was there so you can give me FBS money. They ain't got no problem. You'll see flip-flopping all day long. And that's why that scam African shit don't work. We are the first people to stand up and say, that ain't Pan-African, that's scam African. We the first people to step up and say, Pan-Africanism don't exist. The black and brown coalition don't exist. You see why I say that we are certified regulators? Do you see why I say all the time that we regulate the bullshit? Regulating means correcting. Motherfuckers was running around here thinking wrong. We showed them right. Motherfuckers was running around here thinking incorrect. We showed them what's correct. What's wrong with that? How you gonna get mad at us for speaking the truth? You can't, so we gonna continue to speak the truth because one thing that comes along with being a certified regulator is saying fuck your feelings. And this is the fuck your feelings generation. So if you're feeling emotional, you better get your ass to the nearest exit because foundational black Americans will have you feeling some type of way, proudly. So you see the connection between these two op partners, the Democratic Shield and the Scam African, and every time we reject them, they get more desperate. So as Joe Biden flew over there and Kamala Harris was just over there trying to strengthen relations with them, understand a lot of that has to do with them trying to hustle foundational black Americans. And since we've been rejecting their hustle, these motherfuckers said, well, let's put together a conference. Let's call up every Democratic shield so they can roll out that fucking red carpet, bring these tethers on in, these fleers on in, and let's talk all this blacks unity. Because Pan-African really means still from foundational black Americans. That's the motherfucking translation. That's what don't nobody want to say, but we're going to always say it right here in the black grassroots. Pan-African means scam African. Scam African means what, how, and when can we take something from foundational black Americans? And this conference is the main one. And the main thing they're talking about is reparations. Yes, they understand that we've pushed the reparations movement so far, they got to start running in interference. So they call up all the little scam Africans to come on over here. And how do you know that the Democratic Shields have their fingerprints written all over this bullshit? Not only just because the NAACP and the NCOBRA and the NARC, no Democratic Shield organizations are there. No, it gets deeper than that, family. I want you to listen to all of the subjects they wanted to discuss. Tell me this is not directly out of the All Lives Matter Democratic Shield campaign policy of we're going to give to everybody except for foundational black Americans. And how can we get them to talk about things other than reparations? Listen to this Democratic Shield platform that they run it. Movement equally important, they say the conference will explore strategies and models to effectively address issues of vital concern to black America and the pan African world, such as the war on drugs, mass incarceration, gun violence, and gentrification, environmental justice, climate change, safe, clean, and accessible water. What the fuck? All that and more, and here to discuss it is. Hold up. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait the fuck. Wait a minute. Family, did you hear that? That sounded like Stacey Abrams' campaign. That sounded like Raphael Warnock. That sounded like Joe Biden. That sounded like Vanessa Jones, Bakari Sellers, Angela Rye. That is a straight up Democratic plantation agenda. Who the fuck they think they fooling with that one? Come the fuck on. They might as well just roll out vote blue no matter who. They might as well just roll out anybody but fucking Trump. 
That's exactly what the fuck that is. What does that have to do with the black world? That ain't got shit to do. They only threw reparations in there because they want to steal our reparations. But then at the same time, they threw in all these little black agendas that the Democratic Party always pushes. That shit sound like the Tennessee Three. That's the same shit the Tennessee Three was talking about. Is this the state of the black world conference or is this the state of the scam African and the Democratic Shield? I told you, there goes those op partners. There they go again. Listen one more time, family. Let me run that shit back. Concern to black America and the pan African world, such as the war on drugs, mass incarceration, Democrat, gun violence, Democrat, and gentrification, Democrat, justice, climate change, Democrat, safe, clean and accessible water, Democrat, all that and more. And here to discuss it is clean, accessible water. That's what it is. That's what they're going to talk about. Clean, accessible water. First off, any scam African conference talking about clean and accessible water, they need to be talking about that shit in Africa. All right. They don't need to be talking about water right here in America. We got that. See, we've done more with Flint, Michigan and the water crisis there than they've done in the whole continent of Africa. They still drinking out of water wells. Let's be honest. You're still getting your water rationed off to you by your local colonizer. You got to ask for permission to drink your own water the same way you got to ask for permission to make your own laws, to make your own rules, to have your own minerals and your own resources. But yet you want to talk about water. Africa needs to worry about Africa's water. And as far as gun control, so they want to have a world black conference and talk about gun control. <laughs> That's what they want to talk about. Gentrification, climate change, all these things foundational black Americans have been pushing the line on. They want to come over here and say, well, let us help you. Ain't nobody asked for their help. Who the fuck asked for this conference? Like, who the fuck asked for it? Who the fuck knows about it? Who the fuck's tripping off of it? Nobody gives a fuck about this conference. This shit ain't made a peep. How the hell you gonna have a world black conference, but don't know black folks in America know about it? Now, when you want to talk about the foundational black American sponsored reparations rally, that was real. That was momentum. That was grassroots. That got way more things accomplished just with foundational black Americans there. They done flew in people from every goddamn country in the diaspora. They got prime ministers. They got presidents. They got chancellors coming and they still can't get shit off the ground. But foundational black Americans who work at Walmart got more shit popping. That tells you how great we are, and that tells you how low budget they are. I'm only speaking facts. They ain't gotta like it, but it's real. So when you start talking about that whole agenda that he just laid out, that's Democrat all day long. And then they talk about reparations on top of it. You see, reparations is what the scam African is really here for, and the Democratic Shield is there for all those other things to get us not to talk about reparations. So you see the interference that they're running. What I say, family, you gotta be careful. Because the new anti-reparations op is the person who says he supports reparations. Never, ever trust anybody who comes around and takes some type of strange interest in our reparations. Nah, never trust them. These real strange, awkward, nefarious characters who come around and claim that they want to help us with reparations or they support our reparations, they're here to try to steal or prevent our reparations. Y'all know I always say it. One person wants to steal, one person wants to stop. And it just depends on where they land. It depends on where they land. But both of them are ops, so you gotta watch them. All these people come around and they talk this reparations ally, reparations friends, that's only to get close to you. That's only to get near you. It's that person who come around and they take this interest on in what you doing so they can see how much money you got and then they can try to rob your ass. That's what these motherfuckers are doing. They're trying to have a reparations robbery and the whole world is in on it. The Democratic Shields are in on it. This bullshit ass conference is in on it. This conference was only meant to be a reparations robbery because they're getting desperate because we will not allow them to do the shit they used to do with scam Africanism. We done called out scam Africanism. We done exposed scam Africanism. So now they're saying, I want to help you, brother. Let's have a Black World Conference and talk about it. How much money do you want, FBA? Do you want a lot of money or a little money? And what do you intend to buy with this money, FBA? And where can I take you to steal? I mean, get this money. Do you want me to drive you there? Mr. Fufu will take you. I need to stop. That's fucked up. <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, that's what these motherfuckers be doing. These motherfuckers is creepy as fuck. These odd, strange, ball motherfuckers who pop up and out of nowhere they want reparations. Family, we need a space. Check it out. Y'all probably already heard it. It's reparations over immigration. And literally, I was telling everybody the same thing I'm telling you now. We have to watch these odd, strange motherfuckers who pop up and take these weird interests in our reparations. And do you know within two minutes, 
some guy called in, some W, talking about, yes, I, I wrestle with black people in South Africa, and I support your reparations. I just don't think they're going to give it to you, and they're lying to you, but what you should do is you should come over here and support my stuff. I'm telling you, real motherfucking quick, watch out for these eyeball motherfuckers. Don't trust them. I don't give a fuck who they are. Definitely don't trust Mr. Fufu, who's trying to drive you to the bank. Because he's trying to take that money and leave. Guarantee you that. And that's what this shit is. It's another opposition to our reparations claim. And these reparations ops are enormous. Every second motherfucker we meet as we go through this process is going to be a reparations op. We're to the point where not only do we have to keep that door closed, we got to put deadbolt locks on that motherfucker. You can't even come in the yard. I don't even want a motherfucker in the neighborhood. That's how we got to treat our reparations. We can't get to the point where motherfucker knocking on the door. Nah, they can't even come to the door. Don't even get anywhere in the vicinity. We got to play these motherfuckers so far at a distance, we can't even see them anymore. That's a good way to do it. Make sure these motherfuckers is out of sight and everything will be all right. So this reparations conference, we G-checking it. Brothers and sisters wasn't going for that shit at all. Hell to the no. Brothers and sisters were exposing this shit left and right. That's why it never got off the ground. That shit came and motherfucking went. The same way the scam Africa hustle came and motherfucking went this is the era of separation this is the era of delineating nobody is trying to stick to africa nobody is running with pan-africanism no more that shit is not hot in the street no foundational black american is talking about that shit i'm meeting old black folks who's like man fuck that i'm fba you see the influence that we have in this generation we as young folks are influencing older people and the older people, the ones who are on code, are getting rid of some of them old Negroes. So you're seeing the difference between the old Negroes and the elders. You're seeing the difference between the on codes and the off codes. We are making sure every single thing is in order. And it starts with being lineage based, foundational black American first. I say that FBA family tree. Y'all know how I say it. And I'm talking about the FBA tree. I don't care what branch you are part of. You are part of the foundational black American family tree. Nobody said the Pan-African family tree. All right, we're not connecting Alabama and Zimbabwe. Nobody's saying Chicago and the Senegal. Nobody's running around here saying I'm from the Ivory Coast and Georgia. No, it's about these 50 states and our lineage, the same way everybody else does. You notice how whenever you go to Africa, the first thing they say is, we don't see race, we just see tribe. We don't see race, we just see our country. Do you consider yourself black or Ethiopian? Well, how do you identify? Uh, well, black is a concept. It's a made-up construct. It doesn't exist. Okay. Because um, I'm not black. I'm right. brown. Right. So they use the color black to categorize us and tell us how to live, how to talk, how to exist. But I choose to identify with being Ethiopian. Nice. But that's a choice because I can choose to identify with whatever I want. Right. People having issues with us not identifying with black. Oh. Some choose to identify with black, some don't. But my problem is... Before they told me I was black, I didn't know I was black. Mm. Before they put these words on me, I didn't know what I was. Mm. So at the end of the day, I choose to identify with something that transcends what's on the outside of my skin. Mm. But at the end of the day, I'm a human being. There's only one race, and it's the human race. That motherfucker went full African, didn't he? He had to spin that shit back around and say, I am not black, I'm Ethiopian. And even at the end of the day, there's only one race, the human race. He said there's only one race, the human race. Y'all know that is the number one tactic of W supremacy. And it came right out of his mouth. We've been saying it. How long we've been saying it? That all these tethers and all these fleers are just supremacists in blackface. Every talking point, every thought, every notion comes straight from the dominant society. They'll literally say some shit you would hear at a Republican or Democratic convention, only with an accent. It's funny how when they say they only see their tribe and they only see their country, it's a good thing. But when we say the very exact thing that we only see our country and our lineage, then everybody has a motherfucking tantrum. It was ethnic group, nationality, empire. And I always try and talk about it. In America, because of the white supremacy issue, race becomes the primary identifier amongst black people. Whereas in Africa, my name, in terms, in, in other words, my culture or my ethnicity is my primary identifier. In other words, on a continent of just black people, you have to find another way of differentiating. Let's say I'm in Nigeria. The first thing I say, what's your name? My name is uh, Kunle. Oh, my name is Onora. I know that Kunle is a Yoruba man and I'm Igbo. So before we even go further, we know that there's a difference between us. So that's the first primary identifier. Let's say me and Kunle find ourselves in Kenya. Hey, what's your name? My name is Kunle. My name is Onora. You're Nigerian. I'm Nigerian. So we identify in that respect. Now let's take ourselves to New York City. I see this black. What's your name? Kunle. You're Nigerian. 
Yes, black becomes the third of identifies. The first is your ethnicity. Second is your nationality. Third is your race. That man said race becomes the third. Let me say that one more time. Race becomes the third. In the system of supremacy and a world of anti-blackness from one ocean to the next ocean, from one continent to the next continent. If you see race as the third issue, your ass is a walking victim. So no wonder they get colonized. No wonder they get their shit stolen. No wonder they get their shit snatched right out their hand. Are you surprised that someone who says they see race as the third option is failing in the system of supremacy? Is it surprising to you that someone who claims that race is the last thing they see, they get every single diamond, mineral, and resource snatched right from underneath their feet? That is not shocking at all. They're just admitting why they're losers in this system that we all live in. And no, 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 let me say this. I'm tired of them trying to dump supremacy on us as if we're the only people who deal with W supremacy. In America, you guys got supremacy, so race becomes a big factor. In America, black folks are so obsessed with race, we're not over here. They say that as if they ain't got the dominant society colonizing them right now. Can we say that, family? Can people quit trying to say that we see race and we see color and we only call ourselves black because we're around the dominant society? Last time I checked, the dominant society colonized all of Africa. They say that shit as if there's no colonizers over there. They act like they've never seen a W. Do not sit here and tell me that foundational black Americans are so color struck. Because that's really what they're trying to say. They're trying to say, y'all's just color struck. They're trying to shame us for being proud to be black. You only think you're black because the W in America said that. They act like only in America there's W's. They act like they ain't got none in their continent. They act like they don't flee to all of his countries. You got somebody that'll flee to every single European country and still try to tell us we color struck. No, they got colonizers there, left, and right. And they choose not to see color. That's what that's about. It ain't about foundational black Americans are just living in America so we're color struck. Fuck no. Nah. Y'all got them same W's over there. What do you call the Queen of England? What do you call the King of England? What do you call the Commonwealth? What do you call the colonizer? What do you call the scramble of Africa? Was that green people doing that to y'all? Was that orange people doing that to y'all? Exactly. You ain't gonna try to dump the color thing on foundational black Americans and make it look like we just so color struck when y'all over there swimming in cake soap. How can the people who swim in the most cake soap, jump in the most cake soap, dive in the most cake soap, try to tell us they don't see color? Shit, you see color. The only problem is, is that you don't like the color that's on your skin. That's what this is really about. Yeah, one more time. They see color. They see color just like everybody else. They just don't like the color on their skin. They want to have another color. And that's why they're aggressive towards people of the same color. Different tribes, different ethnic groups, different black Americans who come over there. All the people who come over there with a black complexion get treated like dirt. All the people who come over there as colonizers get treated like gold. So do not trip on us, family. And then take it back to the lineage, heritage, and culture. If y'all don't sit there and see race and all you see is ethnicity and tribe, then how come you say we're divisive when we say all we see is FBA lineage? You see what I'm saying right there? They whole game contradicts each other, family. These motherfuckers is walking contradictions. For themselves, they say it's okay to only see your country. It's okay to only see your tribe. It's okay to only see your ethnicity. When it come to us, oh, that's wrong. When it comes to foundational black Americans, how can you only see your lineage? We all black. You see how they'll jump from I'm not black to we all black. Which one is it? If it's okay for you to identify as your tribe, then it's okay for me to identify as my lineage. If it's okay for you to identify as your ethnicity, it's okay for me to identify as my lineage. And if it's okay for you to identify with your country, then it's okay for me to identify with my country. Foundational black American. Once again, does that sound like pan in all? Or does that sound like scam and steal? You want foundational black Americans to have open borders. That's what it's all about. Family, let's say that, okay? The whole world wants foundational black Americans to have open borders. Everybody else can have closed borders. They can have walls. They can have fences. They can have an electric motherfucking force field. They don't mind that. They want foundational black Americans to just be some open door policy where everybody can come on in because if everybody can come on in with an open door policy, that means everybody has access to our reparations and delineating closes the door. Separating closes the door. Lineage base closes the door. That means Mr. Zimbabwe, Mr. Fufu, who wants to drive you to the bank, his ass can't come in and get our money. So that's why you're seeing these conferences where they're coming over here now. 
now they're trying to bring all that scam Africanism to us. We wouldn't go over to scam Africa. So now scam Africa is trying to come over here. There's been a whole lot of shit going on, family. Remember last summer, they was out here talking about, man, you know they're giving away free tickets if you fly to Africa. The Democrats was openly trying to get us to go there. On Juneteenth, they was waving the RBG flag. You was literally seeing W's from the Democratic Party waving the RBG flag. You seen it. Remember when Nancy Pelosi and all the Democrats was taking a kneel with a damn dashiki on? Why'd they do that, family? They didn't do that because they love Africa. They didn't do that because they love the fashion. They did that because they were trying to blend our culture back in with Africa. That's all a part of the Democratic Shield and the Scam African Op Partner Program. All right. That's their whole motherfucking agenda is to try to remix us back in with Africa. They was out there openly telling black folks, y'all need to go back. All that year of the return shit. You've seen Democrats promoting that. Always be skeptical when the W shows up and he starts talking good about Africa to a black American. Trust and believe his ass is trying to blend you all up with them. When he comes around and says, don't you like Wakanda? Don't you like it? I just love that movie. What about the Dahomey tribe and the Woman King? Why do you think they made the Woman King? Why do you think they was trying to push that on us? They was trying to nominate them for awards and shit. Ain't it funny how black American actors and actresses never get nominated for anything? They'll have somebody fly all the way over from the UK and have them play a role for foundational black Americans. But the foundational black American actors and actresses who are from the lineage never get shit. No respect. You got FBA actors and actresses that done broke every single box office record and ain't got one motherfucking award. But yet, let it be a slave movie. <laughs> let it be an African movie. They'll nominate that shit and the award for the best picture goes to Woman King. And the award for best actress, Woman King. Actor, Woman King. Producer, director, Woman King. And next year's award goes to 32 Years a Slave. The best remastered movie goes to Kuta Kinte's biography, Roots, the remastered version, Cotton Picking Carl, How to Be a Mammy, Buckwheat Bob. If it's ever a slave movie or an African movie, the dominant society will embrace it because they want to blend us in with their agenda. They'll never support anything that has something to do with our true lineage, heritage, and culture. And us being lineage-based is fucking all that up. The very fact that we highlight that is fucking everything up. And we're going to continue to fuck everything up. And the best part about that family is all we got to do is just be on code and it happens. And right now we're on code, so we're watching it happen. And this is why they're sending out these democratic shields to these little scam African events. It serves their agenda. And when you watch the agenda real closely, listen to the shit these motherfuckers say. Family, we gonna pull it up. I wanna check all the goddamn receipts. You know, we ain't got a few receipts. We put all the motherfucking receipts on the table and we got them. Listen to this typical scam Africoon ass shit and watch the whole play. Every single plot, scheme, strategy that you can think of that they would try to run on us. This motherfucker gonna say it right here. Dr. Ron Daniels, AKA a C double O N all in fucking capitals. Listen to the agenda and the way he's trying to slither in all these other groups and the way he's trying to just touch on foundational black Americans just enough that he can keep that door open to where tethers can put their fingers all in our reparations bag. That's what it's all about. Putting their fingers in our reparations bag and trying to see who can get what. And see, once they get our money, then they'll fight about our money amongst themselves. That's their plan, family. They say, how about we all get together and try to steal reparations from FBA? And once we steal their reparations, then we'll have a battle amongst ourselves to see who gets the most. But we got to steal it from them first. And since they're all ops who can't get shit popping on their own, they all agree to it. They say, OK, we'll steal from FBA and be friends for a little bit. But once we get their reparations, then we'll fight each other. That's what they're doing. They're trying to scramble for Africa us. This is what it is, family. This is a scramble for FBA reparations. Let's put it that way. The same way that the Europeaners, they scrambled for Africa and they took whatever from Africa. And then once they stole it, they had a little battle amongst themselves. And then they chopped it up and divvied it up and say, hey, you can have that country. You can have that country. You can have that country. That's what they're trying to do with our reparations. They're trying to have a scramble for our reparations to where once they all team up and once they all steal our money, then they can fight each other on who gets our money breaking motherfucking news to them that shit ain't never gonna happen you can scramble you can skip you can skirt you ain't getting a motherfucking dollar from foundational black americans and the reason why you ain't gonna get it is because we see through bullshit like this so listen to this dr coon daniels and all his democratic shield slash scam african language all that and more and here to discuss it is 
Dr. Ron Daniels. Uh, Dr. Daniels, Watch this thanks family. again for joining the Black Press of America's Let It Be Known. It is always my privilege to join the Black Press of America. <laughs> well, tell us about the conference, the state of uh, Black America, uh, the, just the state of Black world really is the state of the black world conference tell us about this checkmate watch how he just stated the question right there family what about the state of black america i mean you know the state of the world notice how he put them both simultaneously so he can blend us in with the question and listen to the answer and how that undermines it's even worse what can we expect well it comes it comes at a, a moment of, of great both global and um national and global reckoning there it goes again national and global mixing us in the issues of white supremacy and structural institutional racism and racialized capitalism, uh, which makes it, it very, very crucial. We know what's happening in the United States of America in terms of the rise of white nationalism, the insurrectionists that tried to seize control. If you go to Brazil... Whoa, 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 whoa. See, right there. Didn't I say it? Didn't I say it's going to be some anybody but Trump shit? He's talking about the state of the black world and black America, and he brought up January 6th and the insurrection. What the fuck that got to do with foundational black Americans? That was supremacy on supremacy, W on W. You see how he came out the gate on some Democratic shield shit. He didn't even wait for it. <laughs> that motherfucker came out the gate. He said, well, let's not forget about January 6th. It literally wasn't even 15 seconds into his answer. And he already started with the Donald Trump pivot. Well, you know, the whole black world needs reparations. And FBA, y'all need to share y'all reparations with everybody because Trump is going to get us now. And we don't stop that January 6th stuff now. Democratic shield, Democratic shield all motherfucking day long. Proceed. Go to Brazil, you see the same infection there in which... The forces of Bolsonaro attempting to overturn the election of Lula there. And it's all over the world we see these challenges. But in the face of that, reparations is rising. Global Africans are rising. Nah, fuck no. Nah. Reparations is rising right here because of the black grassroots. Where the fuck is reparations rising in Africa? Somebody tell me, like, where is this reparations push outside of the black grassroots in America? The black mainstream in America ain't even pushing reparations. So don't tell me that reparations is being pushed over in Africa. Who are the reparationists in the diaspora? Somebody tell me who the fuck they are. Somebody tell me the black grassroots in Ghana. Somebody tell me the black grassroots in Haiti. Somebody tell me the black grassroots in Jamaica. I will spot you the whole motherfucking diaspora. Somebody tell me who the reparationists are. Who are these people who are pushing reparations and why is it such a worldly issue? It is not a worldly issue. The only people who were serious about reparations is certified foundational black Americans. The only people who stood up and did something about it is certified foundational black Americans. And that's the whole history of our lineage. We stand up and we do something about it. We fought against slavery, stood up and did something about it. We needed to reconstruct, stood up and did something about it. During the civil rights era, we took to the streets. Brothers and sisters were putting in that work. We we did something about it. Matter of fact, the work we put in during the civil rights era allowed these motherfuckers to even come over here and throw these bullshit ass conferences because if not, it'd be just black and white in this country. So you can thank certified foundational black Americans again for that because we are the only ones who stand up and do something about it. Now, I can say that, I can stop, I can wait, I can go backwards, forward, and I can still wait for somebody to tell me who the reparationists are in Africa. Someone tell me who the reparationists are in Jamaica, in Haiti, in Grenada, in Brazil, in Barbados. I know they have a reparations movement going on in Belize, but guess who's doing it? The rapper Shine. And Shine is from Belize, but Shine grew up in Brooklyn. So where did he get the whole idea from reparations from? Certified Foundation of Black Americans. So you take the only place that we can even name one. I gave the whole diaspora. I gave the whole motherfucking diaspora. And the only place I can think of is Belize. And the person who's doing that grew up around foundational black Americans. So we literally influenced the only people that we can name that are pushing for reparations. Where's everybody else at? It's the same way when we were breaking down the black and brown coalition and they were saying how there's black and brown coalition activists and we waited and we waited and we waited and nobody could ever present to us one. It's the same way you can't present to us one reparationist in the diaspora and you damn sure can't present to us one reparations movement outside of certified foundational black americans because we are the best proceed in a way that is incredibly powerful and it's reflected essentially in terms of reparations reparations in the united states of america 
Um, we see the Evanston Initiative. You see cities all across. Whoa, hold up. The Evanston Initiative. Family, that was that fake ass housing little fucking welfare broke down houses with bad plumbing shit they were doing out in Illinois. Remember they were trying to pass that off as reparations? Anytime you see a Democratic shield, oh, they love the Evanston plan because that ain't cash payments. That's some bullshit. As a matter of fact, one of those Tennessee three clowns, he was out there saying, man, the Evanston, man, that plan is good now. I support it. That's that Danny Glover bullshit. No, that ain't reparations, homie. No motherfucking way. So you hear the slick talk, you hear the backtracking, you hear the undermining, but did you notice he said this little part right here about how there's a global right rising in Africa. I guess that's the global rising ain't none of us motherfucking seeing because we see colonizers over there right now. But listen to this part. Global Africans are rising in a way that is incredibly powerful. And it's reflected essentially in terms of reparations. Reparations in the United States of America. Um, we see the Evanston Initiative. You see cities all across the country. Boom. That right there, family. Did you see how he just mixed us in with them? He tried to combine our black grassroots reparations movement with an uprising in Africa. First off, an uprising in Africa that ain't even motherfucking happening, all right? You literally have Russia, China, and America all fighting to do the re-scramble of Africa. I said how they're trying to do a scramble for Africa on our reparations. Them motherfuckers is being re-scrambled with Russia, China, and America. So what global uprising is happening in Africa? Where is that occurring, please? The same way he's speaking about all these reparationists in the diaspora, we can't see. All these reparations movements in the diaspora, we can't see. Now he's talking about an African uprising, and he done tied that shit in with me and you. <laughs> he done tied in some type of invisible, false, fake, non-existing African uprising with the black grassroots in America. If that ain't somebody trying to attach themselves to our reparations, I don't know what the fuck it is. Family, you, me, certified black society, the black grassroots, we ain't got a motherfucking thing to do with what's going on in Africa. Our reparations claim, damn sure, ain't got nothing to do with Africa. So how the fuck, why the fuck, and where the fuck did he come up with that correlation? Other than his ass is out here tap dancing. Putting out reparations initiatives, the Institute of the Black World 21st Century by way of the National African American Reparations Commission is in the very center of that. I hate when they start talking like that. You ever notice them old Negroes, they'll start naming out all these committees we ain't never heard of, and it just be sounding like one long gated word. You know us here at the 95510 Institute of Black American Studies Institution on Wednesday afternoon eating collard greens on Saturday. What the fuck? Ain't nobody heard of that fucking institution. It's a bunch of 90 year olds who pull up in a fucking wheelchair and hover around and have civil rights reenactments and think they doing something for us. Get the fuck out of here. That Amos Brown dude, he was sitting there talking about the NAACP. He said a fucking chapter I ain't never even heard of. Sound like he was punching that shit in on a fucking walkie talkie. Us here at the NAACP 5 City Committee. What the fuck? This motherfucker was talking to Morris Cole. <laughs> Somebody come get their great, 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 great motherfucking grandpa until they ask to sit the fuck down and get out the way. So this is what this guy's doing. He's running the same type of bullshit. But when you look at dude's resume, you already know his resume trash. Paperwork dirty as a motherfucker. And it's filled with a whole bunch of tether, shill, shill, tether, fleer, shill, shill, fleer, tether committees. That's all it is. And anytime somebody has that type of background and they have those type of connections, you already know what it's on. You already know. So uh, Dr. Coon Daniels, he's the president and founder of the Institute of the Black World. Another one of those 9-5-G-5 Five, six, seven committees that ain't nobody ever fucking heard of and ain't did shit for the black community. Anyway, so he's the president and founder of that. All right. They call that an action oriented resource center dedicated to empowering people of African descent in marginalized communities. Okay, so scam Africanism and all lives matter. So scam African and Democratic Shield again, op partners. And on top of that, he is the administrator of the National African American Reparations Committee. Narc, a.k.a. Irrelevant Motherfucking Coons. How about that? But listen to the way they describe it, family. They say the IBW has emerged as a leading organization within the U.S. in global reparations movements. Where? Don't nobody know these motherfuckers. What, for 90-year-olds? What, for motherfuckers who graduated in 1922? Maybe for them. For motherfuckers who can't walk no goddamn more. Maybe then. But when it comes to anybody else who's significant, don't nobody know these motherfuckers. Moving on, NARC has devised a 10-point reparations program and is a staunch supporter of HR 40. There go the Democratic Shield. I'm telling you, family, it's going to be Democratic Shield, Scam African, one or the other, or both of them at the same motherfucking time. But guarantee you will see that. 
the congressional bill that would establish a national commission to study reparations proposals for African Americans, Dr. Coon Daniel serves as a conveyor of NARC. Fuck him. Now, every last committee, every last group, every last fake fucking study, we've called them all out. So what have they got next, family? Think about that. Everything I just read, from fucking NARC to the IBW to HR40 to the Democratic Shields to the Scam Africans, we have exposed, ran off the block, ran out the paint, everything that they thought they had working for them. And that's why you're getting these type of conferences. And this is why you're getting this blitz. This full on blitz of our reparations is in full motherfucking go. And we've been ready for it. That's why we've been controlling the game. See, when you on code, you control the game. When you ain't on code, the game controls you. And if you look around, certified foundational black Americans is running shit. That's why these motherfuckers is coming up with these plots, these plans, and these strategies. And each and every last one of them fail. On the global scale, you, you also see nations coming forward to apologize. I don't, most recently, the Anglican Church issued an apology, and they're talking about putting up, it's not enough, but they're talking about putting up $100 million. Hey, now he's talking about truth and reconciliation. I told you, family, they're going to always start off with reparations, and then they're going to start to lean back into truth and reconciliation. The same way we G-checked that Democratic Shield Tennessee 3 guy when he started talking about repentance. Remember, they will try to replace reparations with repentance. This guy now is talking about apologies. He was talking about a global uprising in Africa, one we have never seen before. And he was talking about our reparations claim. And now this motherfucker is talking about somebody came out and apologized. We made him apologize. Uh oh, that's improvement. That's a fucking global uprising. That's the con game that these motherfuckers used to get off on folks. But that shit don't get off on us because we too goddamn certified for it. So he starts talking about an apology, reconciliation, and then he starts talking about $100 million. A hundred million dollars. Kanye West got more motherfucking money than that. And this is improvement to this guy. This is a global uprising to this guy. Once again, this is why we call out these C-double-O-Ns. No compromise. Listen more to the bullshit he starts trying to spew. And notice how he's really going to start ramping up the blending between foundational black Americans and the diaspora. Watch this little sneaky shit he tries to pull. But we see your ass. The Netherlands, Germany. Yeah, because apologies is just words at this point, right? I mean, oh, yeah, but they're putting $100 million on the table, yeah. too. That's not enough. But I'm saying that what we're seeing is much $100 million. Dollars. So, please. Uh, all roads lead to Baltimore. The 19th, actually, the 19th through the 23rd, mm -hmm. um, uh, as a way of pulling together African people from across the world, including African Americans. Here it course, comes. To have Here it comes. not only a... Hey, caught that. Listen, family, didn't I say they'll throw us in real quick and then immediately pivot back to everybody else so they can tether them in? The same way dude started off this whole conversation and he said, you know, the black world, I mean, black Americans too, I mean, everybody. Listen to what he says right there. He said, all signs point to Baltimore. Last time I checked, salute to Nipsey Hussle, last time that I checked, Baltimore is in foundational black America. But he says, all signs point to Africa to bring together the black world. And then he says, oh, and by the way, uh, Foundation of Black Americans included. Included? That shit going down on our turf. That's going down in our country. There wouldn't be no black world coming over here if it wasn't for foundational black Americans. Notice how he throws us in there as an afterthought because what he really wants to focus on is the black world, a.k.a. the tethers in the diaspora, so they can come over here and they can steal off the plate that foundational black Americans prepared. Listen. Uh, as a way of pulling together African people from across the world, African people from across the world, African people from across the world, including African Americans, of course, including African Americans, of course, including African Americans, of course, to have that man said black Americans included in our own country. So we are an afterthought. We're secondary. Man, fuck, we ain't even secondary. We third, fourth, fifth, sixth. He said all the people from the black world and oh, oh, oh black Americans included, uh, not to forget them. He said, of course, black Americans. Anytime somebody says, oh, and of course you. Oh, and of course him. Oh, and of course your kid. That means they done, of course, skipped over your ass. Would you want your husband and wife to say, oh, I love the cousins. I love the friends. I love the neighbors. Oh, oh and of course you. Hell motherfucking no. 
And they saying all that, of course, in the country that we build. If we want to talk about a course, how about a course in my country? A course, the country we built. A course, the reparations that my ancestors are owed. A course, the reparations movement that my lineage has gotten popping. How about that, of course? How about, of course, you're a Democratic shill, a motherfucking op, a motherfucking agent. And, of course, everybody else is just a tether that wants to get in on what we've created. That's what the fuck it is. I told you, we ain't playing with them. Hell no, we cooking. That's how you do it. Other African people from across the world, including African Americans, of course, to have not only a conversation, but to build out a strategy for how we move forward. And you identified some of the key issue areas that we're going to be addressing. But one of the highlights is we are working on pulling together some of the most important leaders in black America and the Pan-African world. Ooh. We're extremely excited. Nobody for knows example, these people. That the new Afro-descendant first woman vice president of Colombia. And Colombia, by the way, nobody not aware, has the largest number of Afro-descendants in the, in, the, in, the, in the hemisphere other than Brazil. Something like five million. And they want to be W's. So the Honorable Francia Marquez. Non-FBA. woman Afro-descendant vice president of Colombia. We've extended an invitation to her to come, and, and, and it looks very promising. There's a new prime minister in Grenada. Non-FBA. Uh, for many, many years, Grenada, under the leadership of Maurice Bishop, the People's Revolutionary Government. Non-FBA. place. It was the shining beacon of progressive policies uh, in the Caribbean and across the world before he was assassinated. Uh, there's been a wound there for many, many years. Now a new progressive young uh, 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 prime minister, uh, Deacon Mitchell, is on the verge of confirming. Notice he's not talking about anything going on with us. Uh, Prime Minister of the Caribbean, of, of uh, Jamaica and also the Caribbean. Uh, but a global sanction is confirmed. So Dr. Dan just... That man just gave us the whole motherfucking United Nations but ain't said one goddamn thing about foundational black Americans. The same foundational black Americans who are the ones who brought reparations back to the table. All these other people, they didn't even think about reparations. I wonder if half these motherfuckers can spell reparations. They probably didn't even know what reparations was. They probably thought that was some shit you bought at a fucking restaurant. I'm serious. Cause wasn't nobody talking about reparations five years ago. It's only been foundational black Americans at the black grassroots who have been talking about reparations. Everybody else either tried to hide from the shit or they didn't know what the fuck it was. Now we blow it up and everybody wants a part of it. It's just like our culture. We do something, the rest of the world does it. Trust me, they wouldn't be talking about reparations if it wasn't for us the same way they wouldn't be in this country having that bullshit ass tether meeting if it wasn't for us. This motherfucker named every single country in the diaspora. He started talking about the president of Wakanda is going to be here. They're gonna fly in on some fucking vibranium horses. The fuck out of here. But you ain't say one thing about FBA. So the very fact that they didn't say nothing about FBA and they speak about all these other places in the diaspora, that lets you know that they're only using FBA as a headline to get attention. See, they only want to throw us in there so they can put our tangibles on the table so they can get dibs on it. The only reason all of these other groups, and I'm talking about all of them, all these other tether groups, these fleers, these blenders, the only time they ever mention us is so they can mention our resources. If they couldn't bring up our resources, they wouldn't mention us. They don't ever talk about us unless they're talking about what we got. If they ain't talking about what we got, they ain't mentioning us. Notice, they never have no conversations about foundational black Americans until it's time to get something from us. When our reparations comes up, then we come up. When our tangibles come up, then we come up. When our benefits come up, then we come up. You notice nobody ever talks about us when it comes to hate crime law. They're having a whole tether slumber party, a whole black world conference. He just named 20 different politicians. He just named 20 different fucking countries, 20 different agendas, and not one was about a black hate crime law for foundational black Americans. Y'all notice the same people who always try to talk about our reparations? They don't never talk about a hate crime law for us. See, when we talk about reparations, what do we say? We say reparations and a hate crime law. Them is the two number one agendas for foundational black Americans. You notice the same folks who say, we block too, brother. You notice they're only black when it comes to who qualifies for reparations. You notice they're never concerned with an anti-black hate crime law. They'll tell you all day long, we're all black when it comes to reparations. We're all black when it comes to tangibles. We're all black when it comes to benefits. Well, how come you ain't black? when it comes to an anti-hate crime law. 
Everybody gets real unblacked then when you start talking about a hate crime protection. Motherfuckers don't give a damn about that. They just like, fuck the protection. I want the reparations from you guys. The same motherfuckers who claim they so black when it come to our reparations, they get unblacked when it comes to a hate crime protection. We are the only lineage who is fighting to protect other black people. Reparations and protections. That's what we on. They ain't concerned about the protections. They want the money. Hell yeah. When it come to reparations, I'm just as black as you, brother. When it come to protection, I'm not black, I'm Nigerian. Now, family, he said all of that before he even got to reparations. All the words salad, all the fork tongue, all the undermining, that's before reparations even came up. So now watch it when they start speaking about reparations. See, all that beginning shit, that was just the setup. That's what they always do. They always give you the setup. The setup is always how we're all the same, how we're all unified, how we're all one big black world. And then right after that, they say, well, since we're unified, we deserve all y'all money. See, it's all one big motherfucking setup and certified black society is on it day to day. Listen. Um, but you mentioned on a global scale, um, oftentimes, particularly here in America, uh, specifically here in America, we, we think of uh, uh, reparations from the United States, from the different uh, municipalities and cities. Here come the bullshit. But, but you mentioned on a global scale, uh, how important it is that other nations acknowledge their role? Well, not only, yeah, you know, it's very important. This is why the CARICOM Reparations Commission, which is a synergistic relationship under the leadership of Professor Sir Hillary Beckles, who is arguably the the global public intellectual leading this movement. Freeze. Whoever the fuck he just named, I don't even know who the fuck they are. He said somebody, whoever the fuck that is, is the leading intellectual on the reparations conversation. Nothing about Dr. Claude Anderson. Nothing about the reparationists that exist right here in America. Notice how he started off with CARICOM. CARICOM, by the Democratic Party, they've been trying to crowbar them into our reparations conversation for the longest. So he started off by naming CARICOM, which is about the Caribbean, and then he went into some lady, whoever the fuck she is, and said she's the leader on the reparations movement. Not only are they trying to replace us with our own reparations claim, they're trying to replace our scholars and put in their own fake scholars. To them, scholar just means shill. To them, scholar just means thief. To them, scholar just means a fucking tether. And that's exactly what tethering does. Tether always takes out what belongs and replaces it with some shit that don't belong. And then they'll just make a motherfucker up. Whoever the fuck he's talking about right there, he done pulled that shit out the sky. Nobody's running around here going to that person for any type of reparations advice. You can't find this person speaking on reparations. Dr. Claude Anderson, you can see him talking about reparations in the early 1980s. All right, it's all documented. These people he's talking about, you can find them if you put out a Google search, a people search, a search and rescue. You can call in the National Guard send out a whole fucking fleet and you never find them because these people are not intellectual leaders these folks are reparations tethers the caricom reparations commission has demanded of the former uh european colonial powers a uh, great britain france um uh, spain portugal they have demanded reparations for native genocide and african enslavement notice he said native Notice he said native, mind you, whenever they talk about native, they're talking about Pocahontas, all right, the people who already have reparations. Notice that every time they speak on reparations, it starts off with some bullshit. There's bullshit in the middle and there's bullshit in the end. So he went from CARICOM to the natives and then he said, and African enslavement. Anytime the enslavement of black people is the last thing you say, that means that you're trying to crowbar the money into everybody except for us. That's what they're doing right there. So once again, we calling out the bullshit. Proceed. And they are making progress in terms of making their case. In terms they're making of, progress in Great Britain. Well, they're making they're making progress in general. Great Britain is 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 nudging towards no, they're not. Uh, at least some kind of acknowledgement. Even Prince Charles, before he was oh please uh, inaugurated, ascended to the throne in a meeting uh, in Kampala, uh, not in Kampala, in um, uh, in East Africa. Um, uh, acknowledge that the Commonwealth was built on enslavement and that, 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 that the, the British Empire was going to have to address that issue. Whoa, what the fuck was that? Did y'all hear that shit? Did that motherfucker say, dup, dup, dup? I'm promising you, it sounded like, uh, dup, 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 dup. That motherfucker sounded like he was chewing on rocks. I ain't lying. Hey, you could tell he couldn't even get his answer right. Did we say when you're speaking the truth, it flows and you're lying, that shit fumbles all over the fucking place? I'm telling you, that motherfucker started answering the question and was guessing. He was the Africa and the da, 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 the conference in the black world. Da, 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 da. Homeboy, your brain skipping. 
That motherfucker sound like when the CD starts skipping. That shit was worse than Roland Martin's beep beep. That shit made Roland Martin's beep beep sound like a fucking English professor. Hold on, fuck that. Let's go back. Family, uh-uh. We're gonna play that shit. Let's hear that shit again, because I know I'm not mistaken. I know in that bullshit-ass answer, he said, bup, 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 bup. That lets you know these motherfuckers ain't got their lines right. Hold on, let me play this shit. Hold on, here we go. That the Commonwealth was built on enslavement, and that, 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 Yup, he did it. Listen. That, 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 British Empire, that, 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 the British Empire was going to have to address that issue. That the Commonwealth was built on enslavement, and that, 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 that the British Empire was going to have to address that issue. These motherfuckers ain't got shit. That motherfucker hopping, skipping, jumping all through the goddamn answer. God damn, family, I done been asked a million questions in my life, but I ain't never bu 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 through a motherfucking answer. Never in my life. Is this who people want leading their reparations claim? Is this who people want in charge of our reparations? Fuck no. Is that the Afrikoon version of reparations? Because y'all can have that. Please, have a million fucking conferences. All the conferences you want if y'all gonna have a motherfucker bu 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 through the goddamn answer. Fuck no. Imagine somebody sitting down at the table trying to negotiate a political deal for reparations and they say, so how much money do y'all want? Well, we want two trillion and 72 cents. Fuck no. Sit your ass down and get the fuck out the reparations movement. You ain't fit for this work, homie. And spit them rocks out. Fuck. I never thought I'd hear a motherfucker that make Roland Martin sound like he talking straight. I knew I wasn't fucking tripping. We see your ass the same way we see your op ass with this reparations. Now he's just making up shit. So Prince Charles apologized for slavery and put reparations on the table according to this motherfucker. These motherfuckers ain't got no shame. When you deal with shameless people, you get shameless shit. How do you hold him accountable for those statements? And not well, let it I mean, just be a you, moment. You, well, now, you know, he, he's stuttering. Any other movement, through political work, through political organizing, there are people inside of Great Britain who are pressing the case. Who? The, the, there, there's a way in which corporations now are also making those kinds of acknowledgments. He said, there's people. What people? Once again, they're always naming some faceless folks. They're always just throwing words out there. He said, there's people. What people? Is it the same Africanist out here who got a reparations movement? Don't know who they are. Is it the same intellectual leaders that you keep referring to? Don't know who they are. Is it the same African uprising that ain't no motherfucking person seen? No. And notice he started stuttering. The guy asked him a question. He said, okay, well, how do we do it? He said, well, you, you know, we, there's, there's people out there. What people? Exactly. Now, when it comes to Certified Foundation of Black America, we can name people for years, names and dates that been pushing reparations. What about y'all? Oh, you ain't got none because you're bullshitting. Inside of Britain itself, there is a vibrant reparations movement, a vibrant reparations movement in France, in Germany, in Spain, in, Port in all of these nations. And ironically, they are the sons and daughters of those who were dispossessed mm -hmm. through colonialism. And, and Dr. Daniels, uh... Bullshit. Family, we all know there ain't a reparations movement in any other countries that he named. There ain't none. Let me ask y'all this question. Do you see more black people from all those countries he just named, all throughout Africa, all throughout the Caribbean, all throughout Europe, do you see more reparationists from those countries or do you see more TikTok tethers talking shit on black Americans? Which one do you see? I don't see reparationists. I see tethers on TikTok saying, how can black Americans think that some is better? Or then I see another one say, black Americans think they better than us. And then I see another one saying, you black Americans, you, you hate us, you have no culture. African Americans really do not embrace their culture, and it's very, very worrying. How can I ask you where you're from and you tell me the state? You, I don't, I'm sorry, I can't do Americans. I need somebody with culture, I'm sorry. <laughs> you don't even know what ethnicity you are. You don't even know what country you originally come from. Yeah, I got culture. culture. We got like, the culture. We are the right, culture. Yeah. Who the culture? We are the culture. Yes. Globally, they know about no, black Americans. No, hold on. We know Globally, they that, know that, about black Americans. You gotta remember 1804, baby. We're not going to use American. We're not going to use the word American. I see all these TikTok tethers, but I don't see no TikTok reparationist. They quick to pull out their FLIR phone and do a tether two-step and talk shit about FBA, but I don't see any of these people trying to petition their own countries for reparations. So what he just did is named all of these places where there's no reparations at. He just named all these fake reparation scholars so he can make it look like they've been pushing the lie. 
The only reason he has to do that is because he wants to take it off of foundational black Americans really being the only reparationist in the whole fucking world. He wants to take our ownership over our own reparations claim and crowbar and buffer everybody else into it. And he has to do that by making shit up. These people ain't got no motherfucking pride, family. By the time you're even having these bullshit bootleg ass conferences, you already know pride done left you a long motherfucking time ago. And that's what it is. Pride done left these motherfuckers a long time ago, if they ever had it. See, we got that DNA and we got them genetics of pride standing on 10, making things happen. They got that run, skip, jump, get the fuck out of Dodge and serve massa energy. And you know those two things cannot coexist. That's why he's over here hating on us and we ain't even thinking about them. Oh, but let's talk about that whack ass conference. That shit was janky as a motherfucker too. Janky, they had motherfuckers there rapping. They was doing whole reggae concerts and shit. This is how tetherified that shit was. Not only did you have the Democratic Shields, you had motherfuckers doing reggae songs. I ain't lying. They was fighting. Motherfuckers was grabbing each other, getting into it. You remember our reparations rally? Do you remember how pure it was? How certified it was? The energy we put out? That's the foundational black grassroots. This shit that they had, that was a tether slumber party. A Fleer Fiesta, a Blender Bonanza. They was doing all types of shit. What we say, they doing too much? Them motherfuckers was doing too much. And especially coming from a tether. So you know they had no plan. You know they had no agenda. This is what happens when your only agenda is stealing from foundational black Americans. All right? Their whole agenda wraps around what we are doing and how they can get it from us. They have no plans. They have no strategy. They have no mission statement. The only thing they know and the only reason why they were there and the only thing they have in common is that they all want a piece of our pie. I'm telling you, these motherfuckers get unified based on trying to take from us. You know you are a powerful lineage, heritage, and culture when motherfuckers who don't even like each other become buddy buddies just so they can steal your shit. So that shows you the type of energy that we're on. So all the tethers from all across the world, they got that phone call, they got that telegram, they got that email. Come on down to Baltimore, let's all meet up and we can get together and some of us somehow can come up with a plan to take foundational black American reparations. And that shit was a joke. FBA did not go for that shit. Nobody covered it. Nobody was talking about it. It was a bunch of babbling, a bunch of ranting and a bunch of fighting. And you know why they fighting? It's that backstabbing culture. You can't put a bunch of people who have tribalism in the same place and think they ain't gonna do that backstabbing shit. They was in there fighting like a motherfucker. They wanna see who's gonna get that social program. They wanna see who's gonna get that money bag. They wanna see who's gonna get them grants. There's only so many to go around. That's the thing. You can't put a bunch of non-FBA immigrants in one room because they're all gonna start fighting each other. Especially when we tell them, y'all can't have access to our benefits. Now what the fuck they gonna do? They say, I want the grant. No, I want the grant. I want the money. No, I want the money. They can't get along. Fuck no. And you seen it right now. They was fighting, family. We can all meet up, have a great time, show each other love, go our separate ways, and put out that FBA energy with no problems. These motherfuckers can't even get together for one conference without fighting. I'm not lying. They was grabbing each other by the shirt. They was probably fighting on who fled the furthest. I fled six countries. I fled seven. No, you didn't. Uh-huh. You know how we check paperwork? They check passports. Okay, you fled the eight countries. I only fled the seven. You win. Damn real. We travel around the world and rack up frequent flyer mileage. They go around the world and rack up frequent fleer mileage. And that shit come on planes, boats, foot, bicycles, however the fuck they can flee, they gonna take it. So that was a fleer convention. And all they did was got together, try to come up with a strategy, and it shows you it ain't working, and it shows you it ain't going nowhere, and it shows you that even when they strategize against us, they still can't win. And every time they cosplay us, pretend to be us, or act like us, something goes wrong. You notice that shit went left real quick, right? It went left. Every time they try to be like us, that shit ends up going left. That shit was a scam thon obsessed with us. They be in our country talking about our reparations. They be on our pages in our comment section speaking about our business and they can't get none of our money and that shit drives a scam. Cooning asses crazy. And speaking of going crazy family, y'all thought I was playing. No, they was there doing whole Rastafarian songs. Yes, talking about I want the reparations all your money mine. Y'all don't believe me? Hold on, fuck that. Y'all believe me? Listen. Why do we act like colonial tool? The African unity becoming a reality. 
<laughs> that motherfucker said, I want your reparations. They said, where you want it at? He said, right near the beach, boy. <laughs> Fuck out of here. That man literally went to a reparations conference and busted out a damn song. That been like all of us going to the reparations rally or the expo and we bust out with some fucking Bobby Brown, the new edition. Get the fuck out of here. They ain't serious about reparations. This is what happens when you trying to steal somebody else's shit and you can't get your own shit. You do dumb ass tactics like that. And them motherfuckers was clapping. There was a motherfucker in the crowd talking about something. That boy good. No, that boy want my money and he ain't getting shit. That boy better take his ass back to Kingston. And you better take your ass back to Haiti and your ass back to Senegal. You can take your ass back to Lagos because all of this certified foundational black American reparations money is going to stay right here in foundational black America. Fleedman. And the fuckery wasn't done. Nope. Then they ran out the Democratic Shields. And give this motherfucker about two seconds and he going to start going through all the Democratic talking points, the whole Democratic agenda, one by one by one. He started talking about the Tennessee Three. No motherfucking shame. Of changing demographics in this country. It's based on paranoia. It's based on demagoguery and exploitation. And an effort to manipulate the minds of people to make them fearful. It manifests itself in Tennessee. What the fuck that got to do with foundational black American reparations? Not a goddamn thing. When three legislators, two black and one white, decide to stand up, one black, five white, they stand up and demand that the Tennessee legislature. That shit was so fucking silent, you could hear a pin drop. A lot of people came there dressed up as empty seats, okay? Because there was a whole lot of motherfucking empty seats. I don't know what's worse, a Democratic shield or a scam Africoon. And if you put a Democratic shield and a scam Africoon together, then all shit's fucked up. And for them and everybody who attended, all that shit was fucked up. And that's why everybody was laughing at him. That conference was really the political laughing stock. Everybody was laughing at it. They didn't even send the big Democratic shills. Vanessa Jones didn't even go to that motherfucker. They didn't send broken buck Kari Sellers to that motherfucker. They sent the bottom, low budget, nobody knows who the fuck you are Democratic shills. That shit was a waste of time, waste of energy, and a waste of space, and they don't feel nothing but jokes. That's why motherfuckers is laughing at them. Them and all them empty seats. Pathetic. This motherfucker couldn't even finish his speech. What the fuck was that? And notice how he said, whether they give us for this or whether they give it for that, whether they give it for that, how the fuck do you go to a reparations claim and use the term whether you give it to me or not? Whether you give it here, whether you give it there, that's like trying to negotiate a deal and saying whether you give me $200 or $5, whether you give me 2% or my full 100%. Look at them. They come into the reparations table not even knowing what they want. Didn't I say they don't have a motherfucking plan? Well, if they ain't got a motherfucking plan, you heard it right there, family. The motherfucker just said 100 different things and doesn't even have a definitive answer. They not serious about reparations. The only thing that they are serious about is what they've always been serious about. That is pocket watching foundational black Americans, cosplaying foundational black Americans, but never capable of being foundational black Americans because they ain't got that FBA soul because that shit is priceless. Trust, believe, and know that. But here we go, family. I'm about to drop the biggest race receipt we've ever dropped right here. I'm about to do it on point, on game, on motherfucking game. Do you wanna know how we know 
that they want to take our reparations? See, we don't just say they want our reparations. We give receipts. And I just gave about a thousand of them a minute ago. Now I'm about to give one right here that's going to be bigger than all those thousand combined. Do you want to know how we know that these motherfuckers want to steal, take, and grab our reparations from us? I got proof. I got 120% proof. The reason why we know that these motherfuckers is out to steal our reparations and a reparations ops, the answer is simply they don't have a plan. They don't have a motherfucking plan. That's the answer right there if you want to see, spot, frame, highlight, break down a reparations op. Where's their reparations plan? Show foundational black Americans your black world conference reparations plan. Show me your Africa reparations plan, your Caribbean, your CARICOM. Show me your motherfucking reparations plan. And if you ain't got one, that shows us that you're only here for ours. Fuck who your reparations are. What is their reparations plan? You ever notice you can never see plans on paper. You never see no numbers. You don't never see no data. You don't never see no dollar amount from these tethers. They don't even say if they're fighting for cash payments. What the fuck is your reparations plan, scam Africoon? Do you have one? Or is it just wait around long enough and wait to see whatever we get and then try to swoop on in and steal it? That's what the fuck your plan really is, and we exposing your ass. We have hundreds of foundational black Americans right here in America, right here in this chat. We gonna have 100, 200 people that already got reparations plans, can break it down. You got teenagers in America that say, man, I believe we should go ahead and get about 1.5 trillion. We can start at these numbers, work our way up. We gotta negotiate, but I wanna start at 100 million for this, 100 million for that. We breaking it down from household to household. What the fuck they breaking it down, from village to village? Come on now, let's be real. You ain't got no books, you ain't got no scholars, you ain't got no reparations conferences. We had a reparations rally. And that one reparations rally that we had in Washington, D.C., that's more than the whole diaspora has done combined in 500 years. Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying. All we doing is dropping receipts, family. All we're doing. So we got to ask the question. Where's your reparations plan at, homie? You sitting here talking about reparations for us and global movement and Africans and we all deserve it because we are black, but you can't give me one agenda on how you gonna get it. We don't know if these motherfuckers is fighting for mud pies or money. We don't know because the motherfucker ain't said it. Only thing they keep trying to do is talk about how unified they are with us. You notice that their whole reparations plan is revolved around how much they're just like us, how much we's all blacks, how much we all on the same team. Motherfucker ain't said nothing about no money. Motherfucker ain't said shit about no dollars. He ain't even talking about getting no quarters. Motherfucker, you ain't talking about reparations and getting nickels. But this motherfucker keep talking about us. It shows you, man. It's rent free. And when it comes to reparations, we really rent free in these motherfuckers' heads. So let Black Alpha say the motherfucking truth for the whole world to hear. And I'm going to say it right now, family. And this go for the scam Africoon. This go for the dirty diaspora. And this go for the busted ass conference they had over there. Foundational Black Americans. Our plan is coming to Washington to get our check. Their plan is coming to America to steal our check. And with that said, checkmate, Black Alpha nails it again. Goddamn right. Smash that like button, family. Let's get it. Let's go. The block party continues. The roast continue. And the regulating always going to continue. Motherfucking receipt. That's a receipt right there. That's the motherfucking receipt. A receipt on the table, right in front of their motherfucking face. We're going to have to get that receipt printed and put up on the motherfucking big screen. If you're all about reparations, then you should have a reparations plan. And these motherfuckers ain't got one word written on paper. But yet, we got teenagers in America who do. You see the motherfucking difference between the counterfeits and the certifieds. And let me take it a step further, family. How you going to get reparations when you still giving away all your resources to the W? <laughs> Reparations is a mind state And sorry, they don't have it See, we got the mind state of what we said earlier We gonna get shit done We independent We take what's ours They still got the colonized mind state They still handing shit away How the fuck you gonna ask for reparations money At the same time You're handing away all your diamonds, your minerals, and resources That's a goddamn oxymoron You ain't gonna say I want reparations money And then turn around and say Here's all my gold, queen <laughs> The fuck out of here How you gonna ask for reparations But yet y'all was just crying over the queen of England Get the fuck out of here. That means they ain't got one. And they reparations claim is trying to steal our reparations claim. Just like everything they do, it revolves around certified foundational black Americans. These motherfuckers would rather fail than get it popping on their own. I told you, the F in FLIR stands for failure. And when you fail, you start looking for everybody else. Notice all the laws that we come up with, they got to get in on it. All the culture we come up with, they got to get in on it. Reparations ain't no different. Why the fuck is the diaspora mimicking our culture when they got hundreds of thousands of years head start on us? That'd be like you dressing like your kid. 
They call them the motherland. They the mother that's dressing like the child. They must be the mother that's at the club twerking with their daughter. That's who the fuck Africa is because you're trying to mimic our culture, but yet you the mother. How the fuck can the mother be mimicking the child? Somebody call CPS. Get CPS on the motherfucking phone right now because that's an unfit mother like a motherfucker in certified black society done call it all the way out. From the Africans to the scams to the fake ass, I want to steal FBA reparations. Not this time, not this era, not this day. Move right the fuck on, Mr. Mutombo. G-check. <laughs> Yeah, they know what it is. They know a party ain't a party if we don't come. If we don't come, man, shit ain't popping. That's what it is. Not only do these motherfuckers want our intellectual properties, not only do motherfuckers want to steal our culture, they know it ain't popping unless we around. You feel me? We the motherfuckers who get everything jumping. If it wasn't for certified foundational black Americans being the face of blackness, black folks would still be in shackles. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. That's what it is. That's the truth. So when we sit here and we start calling out scam Africanism, all the contradictions, all the bullshit, all the lies, all the twisted turns that they try to throw at us, you got to start with culture. See, it all starts with our culture. Everything that we've created is everything that the world wants. Let me say that one more time for the back row. Everything that we've created is everything the world wants because they don't have it in them to do what we've done. It's a hell of a thing to sit back and look at something that you physically are incapable of doing. See, the average person, when confronted with that, it fucks them up. It makes them jealous, spite, envious. They cannot stand the fact that foundational black Americans, the one that they've been programmed to hate on. Now, mind you, the dominant society has been programmed to hate on us. That's why all the people in the dominant society are anti-black. And then all the minions of the dominant society, all the I want to be's of supremacists, all the blacks and browns folks, they hate on us because they've been programmed to hate on us. And the diaspora, they hate on us simply because we are the face of blackness and we're doing things that they could never have done. They got a hundred thousand year head starts and are still a hundred thousand years behind us. Let me say that one more time for the people in the back. They got a hundred thousand year head start on us and they still a hundred thousand years behind. So imagine sitting there in your village, your colonizer just got done whooping you with a bamboo stick. Them scars, they hurt, they stinging. Your kids is waving the colonizer flag. Them pretty bright diamonds that just got pulled out the dirt, the sapphires, the rubies, the crystals. That $500 billion worth of oil that's coming from your homeland that your ancestors are built on. The colonizer's coming over there and taking that shit. He's saying, get the fuck out of my way, Mr. Fufu. I'm taking this shit back to England. How does that make you feel? Doesn't that hurt you? Doesn't that make a motherfucker angry? And what's the first thing they do when they get angry? So the colonizer done came over here, done whooped them with a bamboo stick, done told their kids, speak my language, told their kids, wave my flag, took all your diamonds, your minerals, and your resources, pushed Mr. Fufu out the side, and left home with that W. Karen that deep down inside you want to be with, Mr. Fufu. What's the first thing Mr. Fufu does, y'all? Does he get mad at the colonizer? Nope. Does he get mad at the dominant society? Nope. Does he get mad at anti-blackness? Nope. Does he get mad at the system of supremacy? Nope. The first thing that scam Africans in the diaspora does when the colonizer whoops their ass, they sit there and say, I hate foundational black Americans. And we be over here like, what the fuck that got to do with us? News flash for the whole diaspora. Your slave mentality ain't got shit to do with us. We over here getting to the money. We over here setting trends. We over here getting things popping. It ain't all us to correct your slave mentality. It ain't all us to deal with your jealousy, your spite, your envy, and your hatred. And it ain't our problem that you take out all your problems that the colonizer put on your back on FBA. That ain't a motherfucking issue to us. Am I lying? Am I wrong? Am I telling the truth? The first thing all of these folks, and I'm talking about Africa, I'm talking about the Caribbean, I'm talking about all these little tethers in Europe and all around the world. The first thing they do when the dominant society starts dominating their ass, they get mad at foundational black Americans. The answer is, is because they see foundational black Americans don't go for that shit. They see black people who stand up. You got to understand the very visual, the aesthetics of black people standing up to supremacy. That only goes on here. That only goes on within these borders. There is nowhere else in the world where you can turn on TV and see black folks fighting for the right to be black. You ain't seeing that nowhere. Hell to the no. You don't see it in Scam Africa. No, no, no. You see bamboo sticks. 
I tell you that. You see motherfuckers waving other people's flags. I see that. You see all these motherfuckers tribalism and fighting each other and backstabbing. You see that all the time. There is no loss for those images. What images do you see over here? You see us with our own style, with our own culture, and we get into our own money. So when you see foundational black Americans being the only people who are proud to be black, mind you, James Brown said, say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. He didn't say whisper. He didn't say hush. He didn't say be quiet. Do y'all hear any of these Afro beats motherfuckers making any type of songs about being pro-black? Do you hear them making any type of songs about going against the colonizer? Burn a boy, and I put the emphasis on boy, he don't make no songs talking about black empowerment. Hell to the no. It's funny how they steal all of our culture, but they always skip over the black empowerment part. Y'all notice that shit? They'll steal trap music. They'll steal drill music. They'll steal gangster rap. They got a Nigerian Tupac. They got about five Nigerian Tupacs. They got a Zimbabwe Tupac, a Senegal Tupac, but they don't rap about the black empowerment that Tupac rapped about. They're right there getting colonized. They can make a hundred motherfucking albums about fighting the colonizer, but they don't. They'd rather come over here and talk about, I'm from Brooklyn, I mean Chicago. In the Congo, I have an elephant in a Tahoe. Motherfucker, what are you talking about? That's what they do. So we don't respect motherfuckers who steal all of our glitz and glamour, but they don't ever take our example when it comes to soul and empowerment. If you want to take anything from foundational black Americans, and I'm speaking to the whole diaspora, everybody who's listening, because I know they listen to every single thing we do. I know they tapped in and they spine in. So Mr. Mutombo, Mr. Fufu, if you're listening, put the Joe Loft down and listen to what I'm saying. Listen to a certified foundational black American speak, all right? Don't come over here trying to take our rap culture. Don't try to remix our R&B. Come over here and learn how to fight for yourself. Come over here and learn how to be proud of your blackness. Come over here and learn how to build. Come over here and learn how to hold it down with your brothers and sisters. That's what you need to be copying. That's what you need to be stealing. That's the example we set for the world. That's what y'all motherfuckers need to follow. It's okay. It's clear. The evidence is proven. The facts are out there. We are number one. Everybody else follows us. But if you're going to be number two, see what number one is doing. See what works for us and then try to do it. I mean, goddamn, y'all study our reparations. See, that's why they're never going to get reparations, family. Let me go ahead and say this right now. And I mean this shit. Quote it like I spoke it. You can timestamp it. You can mark it down. The only black people on this planet who are going to get reparations are certified foundational black Americans for all the reasons we just stated before, but this is the biggest reason why. It's because in order to get reparations, the first step is you have to be empowered. You cannot get reparations without black empowerment. You can't have one without the other. You can't separate the two of them. First you get empowered, then you get the money. See, we're empowered. That's why our reparations claims are moving. We've done more in five years than the whole world has done in 5,000. And I mean that shit. I'm not playing. That's not being hyperbolic. That's not me reaching. And I'm not even clowning. I'm speaking facts. And I know y'all feel me because y'all probably been saying the same thing. Empowerment comes number one. What they want to do is they want to get the money without practicing black empowerment. It don't work like that. It don't go like that, homeboy. Trying to get reparations without black empowerment, that's like trying to get paid, but you never went to work. That's like graduating, but you never went to school. That's like getting fit, but you never worked out. See, what they want to do, they want to have a reparations cheat code. Man, we dropping good ones right here on the Black Alpha Network. Smash that like button again. Smash that like button. Subscribe to the Black Alpha Network. We building, we working, we shining, we grinding. Today is a motherfucking roast. Let me say that again and again. They want to have a reparations cheat code. They don't want to get reparations through empowerment. They don't want to struggle to get it. They don't want to go through everything that we went through. See, struggling, that's in our soul. Huey P. Newton said it best. He said, suffering is good for the soul. And our people have suffered a lot. That's why our soul is so strong. So therefore, we know what it's like to go through the process. We had to work through it. Our ancestors passed it down to us. Now we're taking the baton even further. You feel me? It's all about empowerment. We know you got to have that before you have anything. If you think you're going to conquer or achieve anything in this world as a black person without black empowerment first, you out your mind. So it's not only with the things that we do culturally, it's also with our reparations. We got our empowerment, now here come the goddamn money. They want to have a fucking cheat code. They want to take a reparation shortcut. They just want to hover and swing around us. Well, you know, reparations for the world, because, you know, and, you know, not to mention black folks. Nah, motherfucker, it's all about us right here. It's all about FBA. That's why your dusty ass is having a conference in foundational black America. If y'all had all these reparations movements, you'd be able to have reparations conferences anywhere in Africa, anywhere in the Caribbean. But you don't because you ain't got shit. Y'all got to come over here to the people who have already built everything. That is what it always is. We build it and then they try to come bring their dusty ass over here. And then when we reject it, they say, you're being divisive. And like I said, divisive is good. Fuck yeah, I'm the most divisive motherfucker. If you an FBA and you ain't being called divisive, you ain't doing your job right. Step it up. <laughs> and be honest with you, you really can't even be divisive with something you were never connected with. And they was never connected to us. 
foundational black Americans have been way the fuck over here handling our business. They've been way the fuck over there getting the business. So all that reparations shortcut, reparations cheat codes, they don't exist. You're going to have to work for reparations. You're going to have to build for reparations. You're going to have to stand next to your brothers and sisters like we have. You're going to have to go to Washington, D.C. like we did. You're going to have to lock arms and let everybody know the same way we did through slavery, the same way we did on the plantation, the same way we did in Reconstruction, the Civil Rights era, and this reparations era today. That if you don't have black empowerment and you ain't unified with your lineage, it ain't happening. That's why we are getting it done because we have have empowerment we are unified as our lineage and we're on code these motherfuckers are just sitting back watching and they're gonna sit back and watch forever and in the meantime in between time colonizers are gonna have that whip cracking and you ain't going nowhere so that's the situation that the scam africans are in one hand the colonizers taken from them and then on the other hand they can't take from us so what they got now what the fuck they got? Not a motherfucking thing. So that's why the desperation has increased. That's why the babbling has increased. And that's why they're going on all these little rants and they're doing all these backdoor tactics. The door keeps getting slammed in their face. They thought they was going to come in through the front. We said, hell no. They tried to come in through the window. We said, hell no. The back door, we said, hell no. Matter of fact, get the fuck out of our neighborhood. But we're all brothers. Fuck you. You and your brother Fufu go that way. And now they're like, oh, th damn it. And they stuck. And that's what happens when you ain't trying to build for yourself and you're trying to steal from someone else. Black Alpha Network. God damn. Man, I love y'all. New Black Media Appreciation Month. Salute to y'all. Let me say this. New Black Media, y'all know I go 110 miles an hour on a good day. Top drop back. Let me say this though. New Black Media Appreciation Month, I gotta salute y'all because without y'all, there is no New Black Media. I've sat back and I've watched the mainstream media get destroyed. The black grassroots has annihilated the old black media. You literally see these people with PhDs and master's degrees getting subsidized by the millions on TV complaining about us. Our brothers and sisters are putting them to shame, but it all starts with you. So when we say the new black media, I'm really talking about everybody because we work as one. It goes back to what I was saying. We are unified as a lineage. We're unified as on code and we're unified with empowerment. So therefore, not only is our reparations moving, not only are our tangibles moving, the new black media is moving. And that is the biggest case that you see today. So in new black media appreciation month, me, Black Alpha Network, Certified Black Society, I got to send a big certified salute to all of y'all. appreciate the love and y'all know i do there's not an episode that go by that i don't talk about the brothers the sisters the kings the queens the goddess and the gods and that is all of us together family so i appreciate the fact that on these mondays all the way through sundays we post it up listening to the new black media and it's like a block party that's the best part about it and we're gonna continue this block party and we're gonna roast motherfuckers in the process and drop them real race receipts what they say they say the new black media is the black media nothing in between so let's keep this momentum going so we can give the youth something strong and powerful and black content from certified black folks and none of that mainstream shit it's all about the next in line facts so speaking of facts we done laid out a million of them we done broke it all the way to fuck down but we ain't done what i say hell no nah, we ain't done we don't hide we don't run we out here we on one you know a party ain't a party if we don't come so certified black society gonna continue this motherfucking roast yes indeed we are hey i seen somebody in the comment section last week when i put all the fba inventors up they said bars <laughs> I was like, damn right. Certified salute, family. That's how we do. We roast them. And we're going to keep the roast going. Because when you speak the truth, it comes out effortlessly. Y'all notice, whenever we speak, it flows. When you start dealing with all these other people, you start talking about anti-blackness or supremacy, then they start fumbling and bumbling and uh, duh, 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 because they're trying to make up their lies. They don't have their script all the way down. We know what it is because we ain't got no script, but they got to follow a script. They got to read a teleprompter. They got to have a prepared statement. We don't do that. We just let it go. Y'all know, certified black society, we speak what's on our mind. No filters, straight to the point. That's what's real. Black Alpha Network, when I came into the game, I said, I'm going to come in and I'm going to speak what all black people feel and I'm going to say it exactly how we say it. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I'm not going to twist it. I'm not going to polish it up and clean it up. And that's why I get so much love and that's why the family and I appreciate love y'all give me so much respect. It's because they know I speak it from the heart and soul and I speak with your mama thinking, with your daddy thinking, your grandfather, your cousins, your aunties, your uncles, and what you're thinking. And I'm going to be the voice for all of us to say what's real. And that's why I always say we are a family and I'm just one person on this family tree representing the whole family tree. And when the whole family tree get together, motherfuckers is in trouble. So they in trouble right now. We ended the black and brown coalition and today we end in scam Africoons. But what is a roast of the scam Africoons if you don't bring up the prince of pan africanisms yes dr kubar vasquez 
the man who's been on an anti-foundational black American reparations tour. This guy's had some interviews and he's not even talking about supremacy. He's just talking about us. That's why I say he's on an anti-reparations tour. But it's funny how he's on an anti-reparations tour when it comes to us. But when you start talking about the diaspora, oh, he's not on an anti-reparations tour for them. He's on a pro-reparations tour for them. And you know I got some receipts. So you know I'm about to put that shit on the table. So all you got to do is sit back and listen. This is what he says when he speaks about our reparations. A cash payout for reparations is a trap. Mm. And the reason a cash payout for reparations is a trap is because so much of what needs to be fixed in American society for African people will take more than cash to do. If you're not responsible with the money you have now, you're not going to be responsible with any extra money that you get. That's another reason why I do not support reparations being given to black people who are living right now. So what you're basically telling me is you want reparations so you can give it over to your yellow baby mama. You want my ancestors reparations so you can give it to your white baby mama. This is why our generation don't deserve reparations. Hold up. God damn. I haven't even heard two of those clips. That is some of the most off-coded shit I've ever heard in my life. I'm shocked by that. Now, he says a lot of shit that is way the fuck off code. Dr. Umar done went off the deep end, sunk all the way to the bottom. We all know that part. But this motherfucker said this generation don't deserves reparation. Family, that, that sounds a lot like N-Cobra. That sounds like NARC and the NAACP. We don't deserves it, boss. Master shouldn't gives it to us because we've been some bad slaves. This motherfucker said we some bad boys and girls, y'all. <laughs> We don't deserve it because a couple folks want to go out here and swirl. Under his logic, we always are going to have off-coded people. So therefore, the off-coded people outdo all the on-coded people. And we just shouldn't get reparations. So basically, a couple bad apples ruin it for everybody, according to Dr. Kubar. And then before that, that motherfucker just said it. That's why I don't support reparations for black people living. That motherfucker said living today. What kind of off-code shit is that, family? But it don't just stop there. Let's be real, because I told y'all, they always talking backdoor avenues. They're never being direct. When Dr. Kubar starts talking shit like that, he's talking to FBA, all right? He does not apply that same type of logic to Africans. You got to be real careful, and you got to watch him close, because they'll say something very vague, and you won't really know who they're directing it at. But you know deep down inside, they talking that shit to us, because they don't have smoke for everybody else. That's the thing about scam Africans. And how long we've been saying it, family? Everybody in certified black society has been saying this for years, and what I'm about to say, y'all know what I'm talking about because I guarantee you done said it. We all say, how come Pan-Africans are never criticizing Africa? All the shit going on over there, all the famine, all the colonizers, all the backstabbing tribalism, they won't say a goddamn thing about that. But yet they'll focus in on Chicago. They'll talk about Atlanta. They'll talk about North Carolina, South Carolina. They skip over the whole motherfucking diaspora and want to throw that smoke towards us. Dr. Kubar, he is a prime example of that. I've seen whole interviews with this man, and the only thing he's doing is talking about shit that goes on here. Just a minute ago, he was talking about swirlers. All that swirler shit, family, who's he talking about? How do you know what I'm saying is true, that he's directing that at us and not Africa? Because when he's talking about your yellow baby mama, your white baby mama, he's talking about black men in America. He ain't talking about Mr. Fufu and Mr. Zimbabwe. You dig? So basically, following that, he said, we do not deserve reparations because of swirlers. He's not applying that to Africans. You know why? It's because he believes they deserve reparations. Yes, Dr. Umar has fought for and he has campaigned for reparations for Africa and not for foundational black Americans. When it comes to us, it's anti. When it comes to them, it's pro. And how do you know? It's because once a motherfucking again, I got some spoilers. Let me play a clip of him talking about Kamala Harris over there in Africa. And notice when he starts talking about why she's over there, he gives a list of things that she could be over there fighting for. And one of the words that he, matter of fact, I ain't even gonna say it. Y'all listen to what he represents and y'all listen to what he says when he's speaking about why Kamala Harris should've went to Africa. I'm gonna play it, now y'all tell me when you catch it. I'm just gonna give you a little clue. It starts with an R and it rhymes with hesitation. I got a question for the Vice President of the United States, Sister Kamala Harris. You were in Ghana a few days ago. Sister Kamala Harris, you were in Ghana a few days ago. 
Sister Kamala Harris, you was in. God damn, get to the point. Sorry, y'all. Y'all know he got the the tendency to three peat. You didn't go to Africa to cancel the debt that they shouldn't even owe to the World Bank and International Monetary Fund of the United States government. You didn't go to Ghana to cancel the debt. Tell me when you catch it, y'all. African nations owe to the World Bank and International Monetary Fund of Washington D.C. You didn't go to Ghana to build no institutions for African people. You didn't go to Ghana to pay no reparations for African slavery. Whoa, did you catch it? Did you hear it? Let me play that back for you just in case you missed it the first time. ...of Washington, D.C. You didn't go to Ghana to build no institutions for African people. You didn't go to Ghana to pay no reparations for African slavery. Right there. As a matter of fact, just because Dr. Umar likes to repeat itself all the time, let me go ahead and repeat it again in case you missed it. Listen. You didn't go to Ghana to pay no reparations for African slavery. To pay no reparations for African slavery. Reparations, reparations, reparations for African slavery. Right there. You didn't go to Ghana to pay reparations for African slavery. Now, when it's here in America, remember, it's I do not support reparations because you got you a yellow baby mama. I do not support reparations because you gonna give the money back to W's. I do not support reparations because you gonna buy some Cadillacs and some Jordans. It's every fucking reason why we don't deserve reparations. But when it comes to Africa, he's sitting right there petitioning Kamala Harris on why she should have went over there and gave them the money. The same way how he was silent on that $55 billion that Jim Crow Joe Biden went over there and offered them. Still, that was months ago. Has anybody even heard Dr. Kubar mention that $55 billion? He ain't said a motherfucking thing. As a matter of fact, I see more foundational black Americans talk about that $55 billion going to Africa than I heard Mr. Scam African. He ain't said shit. It's been months, months done past. Many days and many nights. And he ain't said a fucking peep about all that money. So when the massa goes over there and he drops a bag off to the Africans, Dr. Kubar is silent. But yet, let us even mention fucking reparations and he wanna go on a whole fucking tour telling us how we bad with our money. You see what I'm saying? So when you see him say Kamala could have went over there and gave them reparations, I thought you didn't support reparations. Why would you even ask her? Remember, your position on reparations for us is the same as hers. What did she say? Family, I'm going there. Boy, Dr. Kubar, you'd have been caught red handed. You've been caught. We got your ass certified black society, homeboy. When it come to reparations, when it come to tangibles, Kamala Harris said, no, I ain't giving y'all shit. No, I ain't gonna help black people. Y'all remember that? Dr. Kubar got the same position when it come to reparations. He basically said, no, he gave us the pan-African version of no. So Kamala Harris doesn't support reparations for FBA and Dr. Umar doesn't support reparations for FBA. And that's not what we are saying. That came out of their own mouths. We're just quoting them. I always say this on every episode, family. It seems like we got to keep on saying this shit because we got to keep on regulating. And that quote is, don't get mad at us for G-checking your bullshit. Get mad at yourself for saying it. That's what he said. That's the prince of Pan-Africanism. And we caught you, homeboy. Literally talking about reparations for Africa, telling Kamala Harris how she should have went over there and gave him debt relief, built some institutions, gave him reparations. But yet we can't find one interview where he's saying foundational black Americans should get reparations. And I ain't talking about your 3,000 fucking hurdles and obstacles you put in front of it. Anybody who tells us they support reparations and then immediately follows that by saying a hurdle, a hurdle, an obstacle, a roof you gotta jump over, you gotta land on your feet, do a backflip, swim across the ocean, and then you can get it, that motherfucker don't want you to get reparations. Understand that. And that's exactly what Dr. Kubar does. But since we roasting, let's add another thing. We always talk about the contradiction. We always hear that shit. When you seen that Dr. Kubar Daniels got talking earlier. He just made up shit. One person gonna make up shit. The other person's gonna say things that just don't add up. Don't make no sense. So I want you to hear Dr. Kubar when he starts talking about Africa and you can see his love affair with them. I want you to hear how he names all these things that are going on in Africa. Man, we got this wrong, that wrong, that wrong over there, and most shit wrong. But then right afterwards he says, but we're paradise though. You see what I'm talking about? This is the shit they always do. They'll talk all this shit about us, but when it come to Africa, they be caping. You didn't go to Ghana to do anything progressive for African people. And for all the problems we have in the African diaspora, we got wars going on in Africa. We got gang banging going on in Africa. We got genocide going on in Africa. We got hunger going on in Africa. 
Not that all of Africa is struggling with those things because Africa is a modern paradise. But my point is... No, no, fuck that. You ain't got no point. I'm sorry. When you just named all that shit, we got hunger, we got gang banging, we got tribalism, but we're paradise. So that don't sound like no motherfucking paradise I want to be. Hell to the motherfucking no. You see what I'm talking about? They are contradict themselves in one fucking sentence. He just said all these things, fucked up things in Africa. But yet he has to throw back in there, it's a paradise. But yet when he starts talking about foundational black Americans, he got to talk like we some fucking third world country. We ain't got our shit together. We running around here foolish with yellow baby mamas. All that bullshit. Talking about the most insignificant things to our reparations. Family, I'm sorry, I got to backtrack. What the fuck somebody yellow baby mama got to do with my reparations? I don't give a fuck if your baby mama is purple. Run me my money. That little shit right there, that ain't even a good obstacle you putting in front of us. At least try to put us in shit that has some type of sense to it. This motherfucker talking about people's baby mama's colors and shit. That's the reason why we shouldn't get it. So family, just because Jerome and Marquise have a yellow baby mama, that means that we cannot get our reparations, according to Dr. Kubar. But yet in Africa, they got famine, hunger, they over there starving, they fucked up the colonizers over there, they snatching their resources. But that's a modern day paradise, y'all. We need to just give up our passports, give up our money, just give everything you got in your bank account and send that shit over there ASAP. Get the fuck out of here. We don't go for that shit. And that's why you're seeing all of the desperation from Dr. Kubar all the way down to that broken bootleg bum fuck ass conference they had. None of that shit is certified. It's all counterfeit. And we are the ones that can designate it that way because we got it like that. And family, since we sitting here breaking it down, new black media salute. I came across something in the process and it was some black lady, I don't know who she is, but she was breaking down Scam African and all the contradictions. She was breaking down the whole motherfucking diaspora. And I wanna play this for y'all and ask y'all, are there any lies detected in here? Because you know I gotta share this with the family. Anytime I see something or come across something, I promise y'all, I, mean, I cannot wait until the Alpha Cast. I gotta hear what the family feel about this shit. I be more concerned with hearing what y'all gotta say, hearing y'all opinions and y'all takes on it than anything, because you guys are the only people that I value. Everybody else can go wherever the fuck they want. It's all about y'all. So I'm gonna play this clip and y'all tell me is this sister speaking the truth? Because she's been some hot fire. And a lot of things she's saying is everything we be saying. And oh, by the way, so she starts breaking down how the diaspora, y'all can learn from foundational black Americans. Y'all can go out there and do what we do and maybe get some shit popping. So instead of all that hating y'all be doing, instead of all that pocket watching y'all be doing, you could learn from what the fuck we got going on. Over and over and over again. And that idea is that somehow there's something defunct and wrong with African Americans just because our trauma is different than your trauma. And as I was editing this video, I realized, listen, the only reason why your black ass would be able to come over to America and be able to do anything is because of the hard work, the, the blood, the sweat, the fighting and the dedication of African Americans who on this soil changed this land. Damn. African Americans are the ones who got this country integrated. Let me explain something to you. White people in this country did not give us anything. We have had to take. And this is why you see. Preach. This is why you see what is going on in the news and the media right now. We took in the 1960s, the what it is that we had, we took their lynchings, their terrorizing, their burning down of our neighborhoods, and we continue to rebuild and rebuild and revisit and retwist and re rise up what it is that we have done in this country. And the only reason why anybody can bring their black ass over here from another mother effing country is because what black Americans have done on this land. And I'm saying this as a person who is bicultural, whose father is not American, don't go it. My father is an immigrant, and he was able to come over to this country and do something in this country because of the black people who fought, who died, who bled, who were lynched on this land. We have been given nothing. Everything that we have in this country, we have because we have taken. Hold up. Goddamn. Goddamn. Goddamn again. That's what you call some motherfucker fire. That's her FBA side. I know she said her father is not FBA, so she's half. Okay, that's her FBA side talking. You see, all it takes is a little FBA and we'll set this motherfucker off. Uh, back to it. No lies detected. Listen to what it is that I'm saying. 
So don't sit your black ass over there in your country when you're not doing what you need to do with your government. If anything, Damn. you should feel inspired. Inspired. By African Americans. Inspired to pick up your picket sign and take your ass off your seat and go out there in the streets and protest in your damn land. Woo. I walked the streets of Lagos. I walked the streets. And I saw what it was and I saw what it was like. And I talked to Nigerians. And part of the issue is that there is a docility that exists inside of the average Nigerian that I spoke to had a pl complacency and a docility that exists in there when it comes to their government. And then the nerve of anyone to suggest that because of the type of trauma that you experience in your country, the type of brainwashing that you exist in your country is different than the type of trauma and brainwashing that we have existed in this country, that somehow that makes you better? No. Part of the reason that Nigeria looks the way that it is right now is because Europeans ran roughshod over that country. Europeans ran roughshod over Nigeria. Took down your symbols and put up their own. Implanted you with their religion. Have you worshipping white skin. And then after, after, after they sucked and siphoned from the country enough, then they started implanting the leaders that they wanted who would fulfill their white supremacist agenda. And so now you have government officials who don't give a good goddamn about the average Nigerian because they take their money and they put their money abroad and they leave you there without lights 24 hours a goddamn day. Meanwhile, they got lights. Damn. Did Dr. Kubar mention any of that? No lies. No lies at all. But right here, this is the biggest part. Notice how they always say, when they come over here, oh, I'd be so much better than y'all. But in reality, ain't it the other way around? How the motherfucker who ain't got nothing gonna tell the person with something how they do better? In reality, if foundational black Americans had access to all their resources, all their minerals, if we had the population advantage that they have, imagine where we'd be. It ain't about them coming over here and getting elevated above us from the dominant society. That's all the fuck they got. But if we had all their resources and all their populations, we'd literally rule the fucking earth. We're already the number one lineage, heritage, and culture, the face of blackness now, dealing with what we have to deal with with a population disadvantage. Give us billions of certified foundational black Americans and see what would happen. We are the ultimate flippers. We flipped everything. We don't flip money. We don't flip country. We don't flip culture. They can't flip everything that's already given to them. So no, you don't come over here and do better than us. No, you just get elevated as the immigrant class. We would go over there and we would dominate. As a matter of fact, that's why they're on camera right now telling us, why don't you come over here and bring your reparations to Africa? Yeah, drop off the bag. Y'all notice that? There's a whole influx of Africans who are openly asking us to come over there and invest our foundational black American reparations money with them. Those of you with a U.S. passport, you don't know how privileged you are. I know there's a statistic that says something like only 30 or 40% of Americans have a passport, but you have one of the most powerful passports in the world. Yes, there are some places where they want nothing to do with you because of your politics and the politics of the government that you live under. But for the most part, you're a very privileged person. I, I grew up in Africa. My Nigerian passport in particular is one of the most difficult passports in the world to travel with. Africans cannot even travel around Africa freely. People from the EU, people from the United States, they can travel around the world freely. And that's why you see there's a migrant crisis. People going through the Sahara Desert. If they could take a flight to London or to Paris, they would. But they have to go through the Sahara and then cross a dinghy boat over the Mediterranean. So you guys have to really understand that your passport is very, very valuable. There are millions of people that will kill for that passport. So make use of it. My goal is to get everybody to move back to Africa. That's my goal. Okay. I want to get as many African Americans back home to Africa as I possibly can. Because I know the day they move back, everything they fight for in America, they will not have to fight for over there. All the struggle that they struggled over there, they're going to come there with this mindset, with this mentality, with the finances that they built, you know, the equity in life. Oh, right there, fam. 
Right there, fam. Notice he didn't say we're going to come over there with unity, with pride, with strength, with soul. No, no. He said we're going to come over there with finances and equity. He sat there and told you the reason why he wanted us to come back to Africa. That's the same guy who's been going around for years saying foundational black Americans have a slave mentality. Soon as we got some reparations money, it's come back on over here. You see, nothing we say about these motherfuckers, we can't prove. Nothing we say about these motherfuckers, they don't prove. He sat there and just told us that this is all one big cash grab. Just like the year of the return and 99.9% .9 of the times they even communicate with us is so we can come back over there and drop the bag off because they can't get the bag in a homeland. And bring it back and, in, and invest that in Africa and bring it back and in, in, invest that in Africa and bring it back and, in, and invest that in Africa. Man, Africa could be the strongest nation in the world. He said, come back and invest that money in Africa instead of investing it in America. He wants us to invest our money in his continent and not in our own country. Ain't that something? And notice, family, he said Africa would be the biggest nation in the world. Last time I checked, Africa's not a nation, Don Quarius, Akon. Africa is a continent. That motherfucker don't even know. I told you, they stumbling, fumbling, and bumbling when they trying to talk that bullshit. He doesn't even know his own continent. He said Africa is a nation. He said they'd be the strongest nation. Africa is a continent. How the hell my ass know that over here in FBA, but you don't know that sitting right there in Senegal? Akon. Exactly. Akon is a scam Africoon talking that same bullshit. And no, we're not bringing our money to your homeland. We're going to keep our money right here in our homeland. You want to talk about investing? We've already invested in America. It's called our lineage, heritage, and our culture, and all of our ancestors done the same. I suggest you do too, homeboy. So you can't get the bag in your homeland. So now you're trying to tell us, bring our bag over there. I thought you did so good. I thought you had it made. It sounds like you're still 100,000 years behind foundational black Americans. And when I spoke to one of my Nigerian friends, I didn't realize how difficult of a thing that is for the average Nigerian. So don't sit there and start talking about how you would do so much different. If anything, this is the time right now that we need to come together. Instead of being in your colonial programming and mindset, Instead of that, release those shackles. Release those shackles and realize that what African Americans are doing and have done in this country is remarkable. It is revolutionary. We have changed this world, goddammit, because if it wasn't for African Americans, black people would still be in the goddamn zoo. No, because if anything, just the fact, the mere fact that you even dream that you salivate of going to another land shows and tells that there's something going on on yours that needs to be fixed. So rather than going off and talking about all of the things that you would do in America, please do them in Nigeria. Fix your government. Rise up. Do whatever it is that you need to do on your land. That motherfucking part. And let me add in a little Black Alpha Network certified energy to that. Translation, do what you got to do in your homeland and get your own shit popping and quit worrying about ours. Salute to that sister because she said everything that we've been talking about. If y'all know who she is, hey, let me know. Salute to her because that's exactly what we've been saying for the longest about these scam Africoons, about all these tethers, these blenders, these fleers. Why are you salivating about coming to somebody else's homeland but at the same exact time telling us how great it is in your homeland? Akon fly over here and say, we need to go back to Africa. Why his ass acts like a black American. Burner boy comes over here and says, we need to go back to Africa. Why his ass acts like a foundational black American. The one thing they all got in common other than fleeing, the one thing they got in common, or shall I say the second thing they got in common is that they all talk down on FBA, but they all act like FBA. We are the only people who get disrespected by people who are talking like us, walking like us, dressing like us and using our vernacular. Ain't that a motherfucker? How you gonna disrespect somebody, say they ain't got a culture while you dress like them? How you gonna disrespect somebody, say they ain't got a culture while you speak like them? How you gonna talk about somebody disrespect them while you trying to flee to the land that they created? That's just one big walking fucking contradiction and that is exactly what you see with the scam Africoons and that's why they got they scam Africoon ass pinned right there in that jumbotron for the whole goddamn world to see. Receipt, damn. She done lit a fire under their ass, motherfucking right. Because it ain't hard to tell. 
They all got that same energy. They all got the same mannerisms. They move the same. They all repeat the same old, tired ass, dusty tether lines. I'm so tired of hearing these dusty ass tether lines. Tethers all got the same fucking lines. They think they so different and so unique. Who the fuck they think they're fooling? They ain't fooling us. FBA see your ass from a mile away. That is well known. So the very fact that they think they're gonna come over here and run some type of fake ass hustler scam game. The very fact that you are a scam African let you know that shit ain't gonna work on FBA. How the fuck you think you gonna scam us? That shit don't work, man. You better go find somebody else. You better fly to another country. You better put up your little fake internet dating site. <laughs> you better go catfish some old European women. <laughs> Tell everybody you a rich, wealthy man from New Zealand. Cause that's the shit they be doing. Hey, that's another thing, fam. Before it even got to the point with this certified era and we G-checking all the scam Africoons and we putting it all on the line, brothers and sisters been exposing them. Oh yeah. How long ago were we really speaking the real about them? Brothers and sisters, before it became cool, was calling out all the scams they got. They were known as con artists. Everybody knows about the catfishing, all the Nigerians that would get on the internet, create fake ass websites, steal people's profile pictures, talk about, my name is Greg. I ran out of gas from Toronto. Can you wire me $5,000 to get back home? <laughs> This motherfucker be sitting in the village in Lagos telling you that he's in a mansion in Canada <laughs> and he ran out of gas and if you just send him some money. Everybody knows about the scam Africans. Brothers and sisters pulled the lid back on that shit a long fucking time ago. See, when we talk about the scam Africans, that's all about the fake Pan-Africanisms. But the Africans been trying to scam people. You were literally getting on websites and you would read the terms and services. You know, when you sign up for something and you got to say, yes, I agree. No, I'm not a robot. They were literally putting little asterisks in it and saying, watch out for the Nigerians, the scam artists. They've been on that time. In this city in Southwest Nigeria, everyone seems to know someone who scams Americans online. The culture of scamming people, that culture I think is in Nigeria, yes. And they say it is simply because there are no other jobs. When you've tried good, it doesn't work. You have to turn to evil. Chris, that's the name he gave us, says that was his situation. I have three elder siblings and none of them has a job. For five years, he approached American women online. Mostly midnight. Sometimes I, I sleep by 5 a.m. So you'd stay up all night doing this? Yeah, all night. And I have to go to class by 7 a.m. Finally, he convinced a woman from Texas that they were in love. I spend a lot of time talking to her. She, she, she wants attention. People in America want attention. Does that sound like somebody whose country is popping? Does that sound like someone whose continent is popping? It's a modern paradise. The very fact that folks is Jock Bond, and remember, Jock Bond means flee. So when we say flee and they get mad, we just say, hey, that's y'all word. Don't get mad at FBA. We just call it how it is. So while they jock bond and they coming up with all these little fake ass websites, but at the same time turn around and Dr. Kubar is telling us this is a paradise. These folks is telling us to come home. How better our life would be if we just left America and made a better living in Africa. Well, he's trying to get everybody back to Africa. I'm one of the people that went back when he was saying this shit five years ago. Your money go farther. It's less violent. Africa is on the come up. Africa used to be at the bottom. Africa is coming up. It's modern, it's freeways, it's clubs, it's malls, it's doctors, dentists, it's so much benefit. Why you think I ain't came back? I bought land for cheaper than anything over here in America. This ain't no competition. We already got played in America. America is selling off all its national interests to foreign companies. The American government is San Francisco. The federal building is owned by another country, and the federal government pay rent. So when people are like, oh, I'm trying to bring us to Africa, whoop, de whoop, nah, 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 you stay your ass here. Africa don't want all of us anyway. And especially the ones that think you better because you're born in America. Man, if you don't sit your motherfucking EBT, uh, 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 welfare section, they that. First off, this man gonna talk about America selling off his interests. Some building in San Francisco is owned by another country. Man, Africa is owned by another country. The whole goddamn continent is bought and paid for by somebody else. Africa is the one place where everybody else steals their shit. And he's trying to talk about America. Man, you better get the fuck out of here. That's some old dusty ass rapper and you know what happens over there. More babble. And as a matter of fact, speaking of rappers that went over there, did y'all see Takashi 6 9 flew over there? 
Yep, the same Takashi 6ix9ine that was running around here with all these other tethers in New York, causing all this chaos and ruckus right here in America, snitching on all the people in his little group, flew over there after he got his ass whooped in Florida, dusted himself off, hopped on the plane, flew his ass over to Africa, and guess what, family? No surprise, what I'm about to tell you is not gonna shock you. He was welcomed with open arms. They was out there dancing with him. He was handing out money. The kids was taking the money and swinging it around. If you're doing so good, how come people like Takashi 6 9 are going over there, handing out money and getting a red carpet treatment? Takashi couldn't show his face nowhere here in America. He got to run around with security. He got to hide. He got to duck. He's getting served by some damn hillbillies. Everybody's got it out for him. But he goes over to the one place that will welcome him, that'll show him love, that'll treat him like they treat every other fucking colonizer. Africa. The same Africa they say got their shit together. The same Africa they say is doing so well. The same Africa they said we need to go over there, leave America, and live our best lives. Africa ain't living their best lives. So are you surprised that Takashi 69 went over there? Let's be real. Any colonizer who goes over there with light skin gets the red carpet treatment. They treat him like a goddamn superstar. That happens all the time. Look at it. You see the Chinese go over there, red carpet treatment. They carrying them around, put them on their shoulders. You see the Russians go over there, they carrying them around, putting them on their shoulders. You see America go over there, they say, come on down. Who do you want? I'll sell the whole fucking village to you. He got light skin and rainbow hair. Oh shit, they probably gave him the keys to the village. Oh shit, you know, they love him. He got the complexion for all the protections. <laughs> he can't be protected over here in America, so he flew right over there. And they was doing that same shit. They're always dancing. Don't you always see them dancing with somebody? Did y'all see that video with that W woman out there? And she's with them all. There's always a picture, family, and y'all seen the shit. How many times have you seen a picture where there's one W and there's literally hundreds of Africans around them and they're always fucking dancing? They're dancing just so fucking happy to be in the presence of somebody who is non-black. If you're non-black and you go over there, you get the red carpet treatment, you get the royal treatment, and you get treated like a fucking movie star. Time and time again, these are the images coming out of Africa. All this shit about, man, Africa's thriving. It's on the upswing. They always want to just tell you some bold-faced lies about how great Africa's doing. If Africa is doing so great, how come there is the re-scramble of Africa? How come every single major superpower is trying to cut up and divvy up Africa the same way they did in the 1800s? This is the 2000s and they're going through the same shit they went through in the 1800s. They're still selling out their people. They're still welcoming in all colonizers. Hell, you can make the case that's even more worse now. At least back then, there was one colonizer, the European. Now they got the Russian and the China man over there. All the colonizers are just meeting up over there doing a the damn re-scramble of Africa. How the hell are you gonna re-scramble? <laughs> As if the first scramble wasn't enough. These motherfuckers said, let's do it again. <laughs> And in the process, let's try to steal foundational black American reparations because we ain't got shit popping. So you can lie, you can deceive, you can come up with any bullshit off the top of your head to try to sell us how great it is and how we need the moves back over there. But we see all the images. Takashi 6 9 was over there and French Montana. He went over there. And what do they both have in common? They're two light-skinned, non-black people that went over there and got the royal red carpet treatment. Have you ever seen any dark-skinned rapper go over there and get treated this way? I haven't. I haven't. I see him go over there, do a show here. Matter of fact, I seen 50 Cent went over there. Somebody jumped on stage and snatched his chain from him. Yep, remember when Meek Mills? Fuck it, Meek Mills. Y'all seen the video when Meek Mills went over there? They tried to rush Meek Mills. He was jumping over fences to get away. They tried to come back and walk it back later and say, oh, you know, it was just a rough time. No, fuck that. I seen it. Once again, we see the images. No longer are you going to tell foundational black Americans we did not see what we just saw. No longer are you going to tell foundational black Americans we did not hear what we just heard. We seen it. We heard it. Meek Mills was running for his life. That man was scared. I know when somebody's scared. And I seen all those Africans were surrounding him and they weren't acting like fans. It's funny how when it came to Meek Mills, them folks were surrounding him and they were aggressive. There was no dancing. There was no singing. They wasn't doing the Joe Loft jump or the foo foo flip. They wasn't doing none of that shit. They was rushing his ass. And his ass was running to get away. But when it came to Takashi 6ix9ine in French Montana, oh, they were smiley faces. They was handshakes. They was hugs. They was literally squeezing on them men. They was acting like Jesus came. Oh, yes, the fuck they was. We only telling them what we saw. And what did we see? We seen a whole bunch of smiley faces. They was living it up. But fam, let's speak on it. Who are the only group of people who always have trouble going to Africa? Black people. Black visitors to Africa are never treated the same. You don't see no pictures. You don't see no videos of it. If somebody comes over there from Europe, you see all their teeth and all their eyes bucking. 
and somebody comes over there from Russia, you see all their teeth and all their eyes bucking. Someone comes from Asia, you see all their teeth and all their eyes bucking. And somebody comes from the royal family, I don't give a fuck if it's a maid, you see all their teeth and all their eyes bucking. But yet black Americans go over there, they get scammed, they get hated on, and a lot of times they get straight up attacked. And so I gave her that. And then upon me giving her working as my personal assistant, we experienced so much discrimination. I wanted to pack up my bags and just be done coming here to Ghana. The discrimination is the self-hate. It's not racist hate against black on black. It's the self-hate. So I'm a foreigner. You don't like me. You don't want me here. And then she's from Nigeria. Right there, family. That's just one out of thousands of stories, horror stories. And we at the New Black Media and the Black Grassroots, we're really the only people covering this. Because if you let them lie, they just gonna lie. If you let them go on about their bullshit, they gonna go on about their bullshit forever. You got to call that shit out, and that's what we specialize in. So you're seeing a whole lot of desperation, family. Desperate as hell. You got folks running around here pretending to be FBA. Y'all been seeing that too, right? There's been all types of motherfuckers online claiming to be FBA, saying how they don't want reparations, but they saying that shit in a tether voice. They got a tether accent trying to talk on behalf of us and talk down on reparations at the same time. Trying to give this notion that there's a lot of black Americans who don't really want reparations. Well, these motherfuckers don't even be black American. These motherfuckers be from everywhere. The same way how we was talking about that scam African who's catfishing folks on the internet, you got a lot of folks out here trying to catfish FBA. <laughs> Yes, there's a whole lot of FBA catfish running around. These are folks who pretend to be FBA so they can talk down on our reparations and try to stop it. What I always say, family, one person's gonna try to steal, one person's gonna try to stop. The person who's trying to stop it is the person who realized he couldn't steal it, and the person trying to steal it is the person who realized he couldn't stop it. So they getting anxious. They going in full desperation mode, hopping on the internet saying everything. Did y'all see that wide head? Fleetman forehead speaking ass guy he was coming out saying how if reparations is real how does it pass congress and you can see all in his face that he's not fba that motherfucker got tethered dna flowing all in his grill i don't know who the fuck he thought he was gonna fool by saying i'm a foundational black american too and i don't think we're gonna get reparations that's the shit they on now. They said, we just gonna catfish FBA. We couldn't stop them as a known tether. We couldn't stop them as a known fleer. So now, let's just say that we FBA. And foundational black American brothers and sisters was not going for that shit. Soon as he started speaking, they was roasting his ass in the comments saying, oh, I know you not FBA. Where your family from? Oh, they can't stand that. Where your family from? And he ain't answering one goddamn time because he didn't have an answer. So he was getting roasted and shook up and having all types of Fleedman nightmares. Listen. Political commentator Benji Irby and chairman of the San Francisco GOP. Benji Irby. Benji Irby. You know that motherfucker ain't FBA. Continue. Dennis. Okay. So, uh, Benji, you wrote a fantastic piece about this. Why do you think this won't happen? Well, it, it comes down to... Look at him, fam. You can tell he's not FBA. Democrats really have no real intention of when actually doing this. I mean, that's what my article is about. Um, just before you know, we start, I'm a person that is what would be called um, FBA or ADOS, meaning that I'm a foundational black American. No, I'm you not. I send the slaves on both sides. My no, uh-uh. Fuck that. No, uh-uh. Look at that goddamn forehead. Tell me that's a foundational black American. That motherfucker is nowhere near FBA. And you notice how when he came out the gate, that's the first thing he had to say? He watches. Fam, I'm telling you, everybody monitors us and they use our talking points. We just talked about John Wazam Ho and how he got a PhD on foundational black American talking points. That's exactly what this guy says. He says, I'm FBA on both sides. When the fuck has anybody ever said on both sides? We created that. That's FBA vernacular. I'm FBA on both sides. I'm of the lineage. I'm foundational black American. He don't know none of that. Does that motherfucker look like he even knows what foundational black American is? Does he look like he would even use the term I'm FBA on both sides? Hell no. Look at his head. I mean, if you pulled out a motherfucking measuring stick, his circumference has to be as wide as a fucking bowling ball at least. By that Fleeman forehead, I can tell he's somewhere from the South Sahara Desert. <laughs> That's what he is. He's South Sahara on both sides, but he damn sure ain't FBA on both sides. So that's the new game. And notice how that's the first thing he had to throw in there. He had to cover all his bases. He had to say, before y'all ask, 
I'm a foundational black American too. And not just a regular foundational black American, I'm black on both sides. So y'all can never question me. Don't ask if I'm a tether. Don't ask about my Fleeman forehead or my fucked up hairline. Nope, I'm just like y'all. And they think all that I'm just like y'all shit is gonna let them infiltrate our reparations. They think all that I'm just like y'all shit is gonna let them infiltrate our lineage. Hell to the no. You got to try better than that, homeboy. At least Akon went out and got him a fake FBA hairline. This motherfucker thought he was gonna show up with some shit like that and fool us? Who the fuck they think they playing with? That motherfucker forehead look like an ironing board. <laughs> we ain't going for that shit, Ben Irby. And then your name Ben Irby. So you Ben Irby with a fucked up hairline and a Fleedman forehead. And you got naturally bucking eyes. Man, your ass from South Sahara. Quit playing with us. You too goddamn sloppy. Your tetherisms is insulting. Motherfucker, at least come at us with a good lie. Then we might hear you for two seconds. Your ass can't even talk. Get the fuck out of here. But listen how he tries to continue and speak on how reparations isn't going to happen and how we need to move on. But his whole motherfucking cover has been blown thanks to that fucked up hairline. Grandfather, um, Hampshire Brown was a slave. So reparations were a thing. You know, I began to check and be cashing said check. But reparations is not real. Um, and this is no disrespect to activists like Yvette Carnell, Antonio Moore, Tariq Nasheed, Michi X, Dr. Umar, any of them. <laughs> he said Michi X. You know he ain't FBA. Um, but I, my article dismantles the legislative narrative around reparations by asking four common sense questions. One, why would Democrats, the party of the poor, want black people to be rich? If all black people were suddenly rich and the struggle policies of the Democrat Party no longer suit us, it'd be a total suicide for them. That's why it would never happen. Two. Why didn't Democrats pass reparations when Obama and had the supermajorities in Congress to do it? Because, again, they never had any intention of passing reparations. They just used the promise of reparations as a wedge issue to keep black people voting for them. Right. Three, why didn't the Congressional Black Caucus hold up Nancy Pelosi's speakership for a vote on funding reparations, not just studying it, just the same way that Matt Gates and the 20 rebels held up Kevin McCarthy? Because Notice how he went right into Republican shield talk. That's a Republican shield. Every single thing he said comes straight from Tucker Carlson, Sean Hannity, and Fox News. And they understand that the black grassroots ain't fucking with the Democrats. So now you're seeing a lot of Republicans come around and they say, well, the Democrats is bad. How come y'all don't come over here and vote for us? They understand that the black grassroots ain't fucking with the Democratic Party and there's a new wave of voters in who do not vote blue no matter who. So what they're doing is they're using the Democrats inactivity on putting out policies for us to try to sway us to vote for them. That's that Democratic shield, Republican shield, liberal, conservative, back and forth, forth and back. And they're trying to use us as a political football and a lap dog. That's what they're trying to do. And he is a Republican shield. Literally, if you look in the background, not only do you see a fucked up hairline, and if you can get past that Fleedman forehead, look at all the little coon dolls in the back. He got coon pictures and everything. So no motherfucker named Ben Irby with a fucked up hairline, a fucked up forehead, and coon dolls in the background is going to talk about our reparations. And no, homeboy, you don't qualify for them. Tell that shit to somebody else. We all know that you are not an FBA, and we all know that you are a C double O N. But it don't stop there. There was another guy who came out, some Jamaican dude, and he was talking about if y'all like reparations, then y'all should just leave America and never come back. Now, mind you, this guy's telling FBA that we should leave America if we want reparations, but at the same time, he's not even from America. The game is crazy, y'all, and all we're doing is regulating. Listen. If you want reparations, I'm fully okay with funding your reparations. I think this would be great. This would be a great reparations. Reparations would be a one-way ticket. You're banned from the country. You cannot come back. Don't try to say you're going to take this ticket and make a vacation and come back. I will pay. I will put whatever donation I can to have you take a one-way ticket to whatever the hell else country you want to go to and you never come back. That's the reparations I can give you. If this country is so bad, we've got it solved. I think we, I've, I've solved reparations, everybody. Let, let them know. Marjorie Taylor Greene, um, Sheila Lee, AOC, Ayanna Presley, Katie Porter. Look at him naming all these Democrats right there. That's Republican Shield Part 2. Somebody wake up Dianne Feinstein. Nancy P, wake her up too. Tell her to put down the bottle. I solved reparations. You get a one-way boat ticket, taxi, you get a one-way Uber, you get a one-way plane ticket, boat ticket, to get the hell up out of here and never come back. And this country would be so much better off for it. First off, that motherfucker sounded like he was about to break down crying. He thought he'd do a master's work, right? <laughs> 
He gonna be another motherfucker. Remember that face. You gonna see him in the coon unemployment line here in about three months. Because that shit wasn't even good. He tap dancing and fucking it all up. What they don't understand is that foundational black Americans ain't fucking with the Republican shields or the Democratic shields. So if they think we gonna hop from one plantation back to the other plantation, they might as well get in the tether time machine and go way the fuck back to the 1970s. We ain't doing that. We saying fuck both of them parties. We got two middle fingers, right? Well, both middle fingers is up. One for the Democrats, one for the Republicans. Because it ain't party, it's about policy. If you ain't talking policy, then fuck you. And we moved on to the point now where we're presenting our own grassroots candidates that's the thing they don't want to see they don't want to see us move on from the parties they don't want to see us move on from the plantation they don't want to see us have independence and what he doesn't understand because he is a diaspora coon he doesn't understand is that we get shit out the mud on our own over here and he gonna have his ass back in kingston picking mango because certified foundational black americans ain't falling for none of those cons that he's trying to run and he ain't even got a deep enough voice for us to even fucking listen put some bass in your voice and sit the fuck down that's what you can do tell the man <laughs> regulating them all one by one g check and at this point family it's easy easy work easy money we getting it in anybody who ain't certified is catching that certified work we like Javante Tank Davis. We did the black and brown coalition like Javante Tank Davis did Ryan Garcia. <laughs> That's what we doing. And we're going to do the same exact motherfucking thing to anybody who comes around and tries to steal or interfere with foundational black American business. They was looking for black folks and they found the wrong ones on the right motherfucking day. So as we push along through this cycle, family, you start to see who's real, who's fake, who's certified, who's counterfeit, and who's on code and who's not. And if you ain't on code and you ain't real, then the certified hundred gonna deal with you. And that's what we've been doing this whole time on the Black Alpha Cast. One love to the whole family. Y'all make sure you smash that like button and y'all make sure that you tap on in. New Black Media Appreciation Month continues, the roast continues, and the certified energy will always continue. At this point, family, there's nothing anybody can do about us. At this point, the whole world just has to swallow that pill that FBA is in the motherfucking building and we call in our own shots. Nobody can dictate to us, not a motherfucking thing, not a motherfucking inch. And we are moving the needle, self-sufficient. So it's only growing stronger and it's only getting better. I send a certified salute to all of y'all because like I said, this black grassroots family, it takes all of us to get to where we're going. That one person who's on code, that feels like a million people when you look at the greater spectrum of everything. It takes all of us. We all do a little, we all do a lot, each one teach one. And that's what we've been doing but we didn't even have to sit down and talk about it that's why i have so much faith in this generation and that's why i have so much faith in this era is the fact that we got on code mentally we didn't have to sit down and say man i'm gonna go left okay me too i'm gonna go right me too we didn't have to sit down break it down to the morsel we just got up and made shit happen and that's exactly what i said in the beginning of today's episode we make things happen when you put us all in the same place at the same time like we will be in dallas at the expo i can't wait to see the family let's get it in y'all that's gonna be good when we're all in the same place at the same time we move mountains we move shit out the way and one thing that has been for certain in this era if you got your eyes open and you seeing it we've been moving shit out the way scam africoons we done move the motherfuckers out the way and today we done put their ass to rest just like last week we put the black and brown coalition to rest the black alpha cast the certified energy our whole society we got things on lock and we have no signs of slowing down we're only getting stronger we're only getting faster we speak and real truth to power and the strength is growing so that's why i gotta thank everybody all of my certified sisters i see you all my certified brothers i see you and all of us together i love you there's nothing better than participating in this generation i'm telling you they're gonna make books movies about us they're gonna talk about us forever this is never going away we all got our own personal chapters in the history book and before i leave i'm gonna drop this diamond on you and i'm gonna leave it like this we all have our own personal chapters in this history book but from here on forward american history and world history will all be written in certified foundational black american handwriting checkmate y'all stay good stay safe stay strong and stay dangerous make sure you tap into the black alpha network i appreciate all my new subscribers i appreciate all my day ones continue to enjoy new black media month because new black media is about all of us the whole fba family tree from top to bottom from pillar to post inside and out and with that said i am out i will catch y'all all on the other side and do not stop but before i go remember this as always black is beautiful and beautiful 
is always black. What love? Thank you.